Yes, once again, we have liftoff. Want to thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Big Truth Podcast. And I'm stoked to be here with my old friend Ian McFarland, who you may know from McFarland Films and uh, such documentaries like The Godfathers of Hardcore. You might have known him for Blood for Blood, or you might have known him as one of the uh, the uh, the silent partners in the Chopper Head DVDs. <laughs> he, he, yeah, he, he, yeah. What, 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 the, with the caveat saying, anything that you saw that was shitty, shaky footage was me. <laughs> Anything that you saw that was remotely professional was was Ian's doing, and I, that, but now Ian edited those for us, and at the end took more of a role in helping us uh, do the hosting segments and everything. So um, we, those have been having a little bit of a resurgence lately. I don't know if I've, because of COVID and people are at home, or because they're on Amazon Prime or whatever it is. But like you know, people hit me up when you guys doing another one. I'm like, ne- never, dude. Like, how many years ago was that? 2003 to 2014. 2014 is when volume four came out. But we did that in like 2012 or something. Cause we, yeah, yeah. It, it took it, a while. It took a little while to come out. Um, but yeah, but been, you know, really started filming more probably 2001, right. 2002. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, man, I, I, I always put it out with the caveat cause I don't want anyone thinking that, you know, you, you were responsible. Uh, <laughs> what I got to, uh, uh, I am not impressed with this just so anyone just to save anybody some some hassle, um, I I just cracked open a steel reserve uh, spiked watermelon, but it basically just tastes like uh, a forty ounce with a little bit of watermelon. Like someone melted a Jolly Roger in the middle of like a steel <laughs> reserve forty ounce. I, I thought it was gonna be one of those like spiked seltzers or something, yeah. but no, it's just a straight forty. Uh, it's like with, beer. It's like it's like in Sweden where they take like cola uh, and like uh, oh, yeah. beer. It's like it's like watermelon. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's literally someone melted a Jolly Rancher in the middle yeah. of. Steel Jolly Reserve, Rancher 40, Steel Reserve. 40 inches. It's horrible, but I opened it, and now I'm committed to the bit. I'm sorry. Oh, I can, oh, oh God, dude. It's so, <laughs> so hot, dude. That looks horrible. It, it is fucking horrible. But so, and uh, just so uh, we're clear about this, because I, I alluded or I said this earlier, Ian's the one that actually forced me and strong on me into the world of podcasting years ago, um, or at least planted the seed and, and said, hey, man, you should really do one and and it, it ruminated and bounced around for a couple of years and then, even though i don't do podcasts <laughs> yeah no no yeah uh but 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 yeah man like you're the one that 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 got me even thinking about doing it and and so uh uh you you know i i owe you a debt of thanks for that for pushing me to do that and uh you know the listeners uh you know thank ian because he's the one who pushed me to do it. I'm getting a little teary out here. <laughs> yeah, I'm blushing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah man so what's been going on i i know the world's fucking wacky um and I gotta, I can't imagine how hard like your your industry, like in the film and 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 and, and, and video production industry and whatnot, how hard that's been hit and how wacky it's, it's been for you, man. It's it's kind of, uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess everybody has had an insane time and it's affected everybody. So like to say, oh, mine's more than yours, or yeah. it's it affects everybody in so many different ways. Me personally, um, yeah, drastically, uh, like uh, in business wise, I mean, our industry pretty much just shut the fuck down yeah. um, and it's still shut down. Um, but oh, there's a motorcycle. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're doing our, we're doing the, the COVID, um, uh, you know, uh, social distancing podcast. Where we're sitting by a garage door. To we're, make sure they- we're, we're not at the counter at Chopperhead today. Yeah. We're, we're in the garage with the door open and we're about 40 feet apart. Yeah. Uh, I'm peeking over a little wall. Uh, I, w- I wouldn't go that far. I know. Yeah. I know no, I'm just kidding. We're 12. We're like eight feet apart. Yeah. And uh, I'm peeking over a little wall, like it's a little sound wall, like to, to kind of help dampen. Because we do live in Freetown, and everyone likes to fucking throttle when they come by the yeah. shop and, and, and give it a little rev. Yeah, especially if they see the door open or something. So, um, it's uh, industry wise, it's been um, it's been kind of you know crazy. I, I do a, you know to make money uh, wise, you know, I, I've been in this transition for years uh, from doing commercial work to uh, hopefully you know full you know, documentary and, you know, film work, um, being independent and owning a small business, it's very, very difficult to, to make that, uh, as Vinny Stig would say, the jump, you know, yeah, as, yeah, as, yeah. you know, um, <laughs> a, uh, a Black Hawk helicopter has just come by. I, I guess it's just, um, you know, uh, for, for me, you know, and, and everything that's going on, um, it's very difficult because my wife's a high school English teacher. Um, you know, I have two kids. 
Um, and then there's been the big debate, you know, and talking about, you know, kids going back to school for quite a while. And yeah, it's just, it's, it's the fall and a lot's happening. And at the same time, it's like, uh, you know, I'm doing a, a lot of different type of work now. Um, I kind of had to make a very big pivot, um, I guess you'd say, um, into, into doing a lot of different things. Um, it, it has given me a lot more time to do development on things. So... <laughs> Just so you know, we've been about we've been here about an hour setting up. It's been dead silent, and it's been dead fucking silent. Or we had everything under control. So if you're hearing a cast of characters drive by, I think everyone everyone just uh, was like uh, waiting in the wings for us to to actually. Once we hit record, all these fucking crazy vehicles yeah, came by yeah. that never did before. But so so, so sorry, man, not to right. not to already start derailing shit. But uh, uh, well, please please continue. You know, it was just it was just saying like I've I've had to you know pivot a lot and uh, and change in to doing some other things and, and it's it's a um, still in film and, and music but um, I've been developing a lot of stuff um, this has allowed me to spend a, a fair amount of time um, you know really trying to research and develop you know there's probably I think I have about nine projects um, that I want to do. And in this time, I've managed to attach a, a couple really big producers to some projects. So as soon as, you know, it's, it's, we're able to film and able to really travel to me, honestly, safely, um, you know, we can, uh, we can start working on at least two of these projects. But in the meantime, uh, I've been doing a lot of um, audio documentary work, um, um, which has been very exciting, uh, to be honest with you. So for, for people that might not be familiar with that genre, can you explain a little bit, just back up and ex, like, kind of explain? Because, you know, I really hadn't really heard too much about it before talking to you, you know, when we, we talk and you kind of ran me through some of the projects you're doing. But like, what's the like the kind of I, I mean, what what's like makes up an audio documentary? Well, like? it's, it's basically a documentary without the visual, but a very heavy like focus on the sound design and sure. the story narration. Um, things are a little bit more descriptive. Um, there's more sound design uh, to let you know, feel, and you can almost like, you know, feel like you're in the environment that you're listening to the story about. Um, so I've teamed up with a very old friend of mine, John Wiederhorn. Um, he's a really well-known rock writer. Um, he's done, you see, he did uh, Scott Ian's book. He did Al Jorgensen's book. He did Roger Moret's book. He did, um, let me see, he did, uh, oh my God, his new book is... Um, what is the new book? I, I feel like Raising Hell. Oh my God, I feel, I feel like a jack dick here. But uh, Raising Hell, um, and he's 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 a good guy. He's an unbelievable writer. So we teamed up. Then I teamed up with my, also my uh, composer and sound designer from The Godfathers of Hardcore, and we've been creating some really cool stories that we've been in the process of um, pitching and, and also teaming up with a couple partners on. Um, but basically, it's just a documentary. Um, but like I said, very heavy reference. You know, focus on on uh, sound design, you know? Sure, man. And, you know, and I know I'm not, I'm not cheapening it by saying this, but it, it makes me th think back to like, you know, like in the forties when they had yeah. like the radio shows Absolutely. and they had people putting in the sound effects or Absolutely. like Absolutely. I mean, it's like, it's like uh, the, the, the biggest reference that I can think of that people like war of the worlds, you know, yeah. type thing, but we're not doing anything like that. It's, yeah. it's more of, you know, almost like reading a, 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 a good story as a narrator. But then on top of that, there's archival brought in, there's um, new interviews that we do. There's, um, like I said, there's narration, there's sound design, there's all these elements and layers brought in to make it sound way, 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 you know, different than just your, your typical podcast. And it's in the podcast sec, you know, genre. Sure. But I, I don't, I, I don't know. It's just, I don't want to sound arrogant or anything, but I don't think any, not anybody can do a audio documentary. A lot of people can do podcasts, um, like hosting wise, not that not talking down on this at all, but yeah, it's like, no. it's just a different thing. It's no, it's a, a different thing. Yeah. Like, and, and I'm not one to like, I'm not really interested for me personally to, you know, sit down and, and have a, 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 a podcast where I'm talking about things or how I feel and things like that. I go on other people's podcasts to do that. Like, yes, this. no, um, no, I'd I, rather, I get, you, you're trying to, t you're a story writer, right? You're I'm a storyteller. Story story I, like, I like staying, I like being in a studio. Yeah. Um, I like, I like, you know, being on my own when I do this stuff. I love collaborating with people, but I no, like, what, like going into the cave and just like seeing what I can come up with, you yeah, know? No, no, no. And that's how you've been ever since yeah. uh, I've known you. What, let me ask you a question. Cause, cause you're in tune with a lot of this stuff, but it seems like, there's like this whole revival of, um, I don't know, for lack of a better word, like audio stuff, like, you know, and I'm not trying to, but with podcast or like, even like the whole genre of like 
like um, uh, you know, audible books and whatnot. And and now you're talking about like the audio uh, uh, documentary stuff. Like, what do you think's kind of going on in society where there's kind of been a revival of that, getting away some from some of the more visual stuff and getting into more more audio stuff? I don't know. I don't know what that is. But have you noticed that? Yeah, like, well, I, I, I the way I've looked at it is, um, you know, is is honestly, it sounds stupid. You know, a little. I don't know what this makes me sound like, but. Um, you, what I do, I, I need to be able, I do it for a living. So yeah. it's like, it's not a hobby for me. Sure. There's been a significant influx of advertising money in, in podcasts as you know, it's, it's, it's kind of crazy how much it's, it's gone up in the past three years alone. No, no. Um, I think this year, last year was, uh, I want to say six or 700 million in advertising revenue. And then I think 2021 it's hitting a billion yeah, it's fucking nuts. So, um, you know, it's, it's, I don't know those are exact numbers, um, but it's really up there and it's, it's, you know, it's, I don't know why it is that people, maybe it's, maybe it's people are just tired of, of just constantly seeing images. There's so much in social media, so much, everything's, everything's video, everything's an ad. Um, maybe it's because people like to be able to just slow down a little bit. That's why I like to listen to, you know, stories. I've been listening to true crime stuff like nonstop. Like yesterday I was on the side of my house, you know, 25 feet up for a good seven hours and I burned through, I don't know how many series, you know, of really cool episodes of cool stuff. And I just, I love it. It's just really cool because you can get lost. And the other thing is too, it's really cool is it allows you to visualize and not be told this is what you have to see. This is what it is. It allows your mind to kind of expand a little bit. Yeah. Um, and uh, kind of daydream, you know? No, and, 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 you know, it's something, I don't know, I've just been thinking about a little bit lately, but I haven't really brought it out until, it, it never really came out in a conversation until just now, because, you know, I was thinking about it, like, you know, I've been listening to more podcasts than I've ever listened to, and, you know, I, I think what you just said really, really resonates with something with a lot of people, like, um, you listen to, a, to a, whether it's a book on tape or whether it's a podcast and someone telling a story, yeah. it kind of allows you to to make your own visuals for something. Or even like, I like listening to like, you know, like coast to coast AM, yeah. you get freaked out and it's not, I don't know if these stories would be half as scary as if they were, if they were showing you footage versus what you're fucking thinking about in your yeah. own head. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and um, I, I don't know, there's something to be said about that. Yeah, maybe people are just getting tired of being bombarded, bombarded all day with visual, visual, visual. And, and, and I, I also and think let you create something in your own head. Like you're not even doing it on purpose. You have to almost. Well, I think there's also a, 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 a focus on, um, you know, people, like I said, being able to, to listening something new. And since there's such a heavy focus on the podcast arena these days, there's a lot of creative people trying to do new things in it. Yeah. So, um, you know, I was, I'm listening to this one right now. Um, what's it called? Um, actually I got it right here. I get it. It's, I listened to one, uh, really into one called, um, relative unknown. It's nuts. It's a crazy story. And then the other one that I'm listening to. Is that to, the one you were telling me about the other day? Yeah. I think so, yeah. yeah. And this, this one I'm listening to, it's true crime. It's called Deep Cover. And uh, they both have ties to like, you know, the war on drugs and like the 90s and, and you know, 80s and 90s, which I'm just fascinated by. Like, I'm, I find that world and that whole thing just like, maybe that's going to be my next documentary. I don't know. Yeah, but like, yeah, yeah. Um, they might have some ideas in there, but um, it's, it's uh, I love listening to some of those things, man. Yeah, and it, uh, I have not checked those out yet. But um, is it just like well put together, like sound design stuff, or yeah. is it just the, the good story right of both? Whatever. They're both. I mean, they're also crazy fucking stories, and the characters are crazy. Yeah. So, you know, it's 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 really really nuts. Um, there's a lot of of really just well well thought out storytelling, very well thought out. Cool, man. What what do you think? Like what, what's been your drive to be a storyteller? Like, you know, like what got you into that? I know, you know, you've been doing this a long time and like doing a lot of documentaries. I know you started out doing a lot of documentaries and videos and whatnot in the, the punk and hardcore world and got into a lot of commercial stuff as well. But like, like what drives you to want to put stories out there or put together a story and tell it? You know, I've thought about that a lot and I've never been able to come up with an answer. Yeah. Um, I can give you a little insight into, well, not so much insight, but, you know, 
I, I went out to dinner um, with this, this director uh, in New York a couple months ago. Um, and, you know, we were talking about documentary filmmakers versus narrative filmmakers, nonfiction, in fiction, fictional um, stuff, and, and um, or just nonfiction versus fiction, right? And, um, you know, we were talking about this exact thing, and he said, you know, documentary film, it's just badass. It's just badass, man. And I'm like, well, why do you, why do you say that? I mean, making awesome action filled movies or drama film movies is really cool. He goes, yeah, but this is really happening. You can put yourself in some really scary situations by just going after a story. And I was like, I, I never even thought about it that way. It kind of just went over my head. You know, I haven't been in any situations like I have to worry about, you know? Um, but, um, I've, I guess the thing that's really just drawn me to storytelling is just trying to learn more about people and maybe hopefully learn something about myself. It sounds a little cliche, but I, 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 I often will think about things and learn things about myself when I hear someone else, you know, talking about something or just kind of, and it only happened in the last few years, I think really I've been focusing on this, but maybe that's just part of growing up a little bit. I don't know, but focusing on, on why I, you know, the drive, it's like this, um, it's a, it's a challenge. Uh, you know, it's, it's, I can try to explain filmmaking or like a, making a documentary the best you can, best I can here. I look at it as like a jigsaw puzzle, right? There's two ways of making a, a, a documentary. You can know what the jigsaw puzzle looks like and then find the pieces to put it together, right? So it's already the, you know what film you're going to make. You just have to put it together. Then there's the ones where you don't look at the jigsaw puzzle. You don't know what you're making. You just have to fit everything together and then you get to see the surprise at the end what it is. I'm not really into that. <laughs> I'm into more of the planned out um, storytelling and then going after and finding it. And it's, it's a real challenge um, because once you really have the luxury of getting completely just enthralled, like just thrown into a story and you cannot think of anything else, you start, if, you, if you're really into it, you start dreaming about it. You, uh, you wake up thinking about it. You work the whole day thinking about it. And then you go to bed thinking about it. And when you're doing a long-term project, it could go on for months, years. It can be very taxing, but maybe it's like a, it's kind of like a drug, man. It's like, you, you, know, you, you want to find out more. You get excited as you go. You'll have like one great shoot and then you'll be like pumped about doing another one. And then, I don't know. It's, I hope I answered that a little bit. It's, it's how I, I just, I think about filmmaking Every day, all day. I don't make a ton of shit right now, but I'm thinking about it constantly. And I'm also being inspired by other people that are. And I spend a lot of time watching other people's stuff or talking to a lot of people that are making stuff just to hear how they're doing it or what they're doing to kind of learn something new or keeping up on gear, things like that. Probably very similar to bikes and building bikes. Yeah, and it's also, like you said, you're also kind of getting your ducks in a row for when things open up again. And you have, now you, you almost have like this big body of stuff to choose from that you yeah. can start really pushing and well, pitching. We always, and, we always say like, you know, you just, you're, th you're on, you know, throwing things at the wall and hopefully one of them's going to stick. Yeah. I, yeah. When this is over, I'm going to throw like probably 10 things at the wall. One of them, two of them, maybe 10 of them will stick. Yeah. I don't know. You don't know until, don't know. we don't know until we get there. Right. Um, but you know, you know, you, you kind of started talking a little bit about, you know, the, kind of the the pathways to making a documentary. Um, you know, and I, I know you might be sick of talking about this, but there might, there's a lot of good crossover in, in my audience of, yeah. of people of punk hardcore and motorcycles and, you know, whatever subculture stuff. Godfather's a hardcore and I'm not blowing smoke up your ass. You know, it's, it's not like any other kind of hardcore or punk rock kind of or yeah. metal documentary like yeah. it's a whole it's not what anyone thought it was going to be it's it, you do you knew it. well i know but yeah. you know but I you're mean, one of the few people that i let see it yeah like, we you saw it before even roger did yeah yeah no i know and and, and i was kind of um uh, 
with you in a way through the whole process, yep. you know, like I, I know I was a sounding board or like, oh, yeah. or sometimes just like a, a vent. Uh, <laughs> Mostly you're a venting. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. sorry about that. No, but, I don't care, dude. I mean, you, was, could see, you saw how much, how crazy I got. Yeah, and yeah. I was losing my mind. I like, know, I know. Like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know if you ever fully came back. No. <laughs> <laughs> yet, yet. <laughs> I don't think I have. I, I don't, you, you know, people say like, you know, carry PTSD for years, you know, with, with things. I, I, this, I honestly think just, just, I've done three feature length documentaries that, you know, I've directed and, and edited, which a lot of people don't do. Yeah. Um, when you really get into it and you are, you are, I was, uh, I'm a, I'm obsessive. Yeah. I'm also a control freak. Um, and when I really get my head, you know, focused on something, I, I just can't stop. And it, it, it's, it's, I have an addictive personality, like very addictive personality. And I think this has become my new drug. Um, well, this is my new is alcohol. Good. Yeah, no, but it, it, it's it's very important for people with addictive personalities. That that's a that's a good takeaway. Like to find the thing that's like a healthy. Well, <laughs> it's replacing one with the other. With the other, but Just at least one's it, a little more, a little better. Yeah, little yeah, better. yeah. Find find the uh, the, the, the thing yeah. that's a little more pro a productive kind of addiction yes. in a way, you know. Um, but you know that I I know that there was a lot with that. But like if, you know, kind of maybe people probably be interested to hear a little bit about the, the thought process and the, the, the how that movie was made, because it's so out of the ordinary. Um, it's not it's not the typical band documentary. Right. And um, I know I know, you know, you said like you like to kind of and especially given your obsessive personality and controlling personality, like I know you like to kind of have all your ducks in a row before you go in. But yeah. As you know, in any kind of thing, like once you get into it, there's going to be pathways and things that Ugh. lead you on different, uh, you know, offshoots that you didn't, you, there's no way to ever predict. Like, how do you deal with that when you're trying to kind of rein in the story and like take yeah. new things in and be able to adapt it and fit it into the kind of the storyline that you want? Like what, so, you know, if you want to talk a little bit about that process, like, did you know what you were going to make beforehand or yes. did it kind of change? And I know the answer to some of these questions, yeah, yeah, but sure. as devil's advocate, it, yeah. it would be interesting for, for, for listeners to kind of hear about this. I knew exactly what I was going to do before I started it. Um, I still have the, the I kept a notebook. Um, during the whole idea stage of me making this. Um, and I have, I, I sat down and I wrote, you know, the idea, the outline of yeah. what I wanted this thing to be. Um, me and my, you know, co-writer on it, Tony Fernandez, um, we sat down and, and literally outlined the entire film of how we wanted it to be. And then we went and um, I went to, we went to Arizona and the first trip we did was we stayed with Roger for about a week and, the only thing we were doing was just kind of, I mean, to hang out and to do some filming and kind of start because we hadn't told anyone we were going to do it yet. Um, it was, I was honestly not convinced I was, I was still, um, just kind of moving along and saying, ah, oh, maybe this will be cool. I, I want to do it, but I'm not sure. And I don't know if this is going to suck. Um, I think it could be something really cool. So I spent a lot of time. Um, we spent about, not a long time. We spent a week at Roger's house. And, um, and during that week we did a lot of audio recordings and we just sat back, no camera, no lights. And Roger and I have been friends for probably 20 years, maybe actually maybe even longer now. But we just, I just sat there with him and we just talked about life. And that's all we did was just talk about life. And um, I recorded, you know, everything. And um, I learned a lot. Once I did that, I went back to Boston and I kind of took a couple of days and I just listened to everything again. And we went back and figured out, yep, our story will work. We can do this. And he's willing to talk about all the things we want to talk about. So um, then we went and um, decided to cut a little thing together, show the world. Hopefully other people would feel the same way we did. And um, put a Kickstarter together. Um, after we did that, we raised a little bit of money. Um, a lot of really great, generous people like yourself, you know, put into this project. And then after that, it was just kind of like, you know, a three-year slugfest um, to get this thing done. And, um, you know, problem after problem after problem after problem, but then great thing after great thing after great thing after great thing. And then problem after problem after problem. And it just became this thing. It's like this, that film has become such a part of my life. And because there was so much that went into it and, and how much I changed the person while making it, I think, um, uh, it really, I don't know, in this weird way, it kind of defined certain things about myself, I think, that I didn't really necessarily believe were true and I could do. And um, 
I kind of proved it to myself. And I think I proved it to some people that didn't think I could either. So, which was, it's a nice little thing. <laughs> um, because not to ramble, but you know, when I, I tried to make this film 10 years ago and every single person I went to, every single label, every single, fuck man, every person that, that had money to burn that would possibly be in a project like this wouldn't give me a dime because they, not because they didn't think I could do it. They didn't think it would be good enough. They didn't think it would be very good. They didn't think Roger and Vinny's story was great. Um, and I just kept on saying, you guys just don't understand. You just, you don't know these guys, what this is like. These guys are like, this, there's nothing like them. There's, there's a crazy story to be told. So, um, I think I went off on a little bit more than you age said. No, 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 no. It's fine. Man. But yeah, but I mean, yeah. yeah, I mean, that's, that's it. The, 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 the film is, it's, I set out to not make it a typical rock documentary. And that is one of the reasons why a lot of people would not fund or help me with this project because I wouldn't, I said right from the beginning, I was not going to put anyone with a name in it, no celebrities and nothing because I could have, and I was offered by numerous celebrities that said they wanted to be in it. They heard I was doing a film and they would, Hey, if, it's kind of crazy when you get a call from so-and-so and I'm like, this is bullshit. This thing, I'm like, who is this? He's like, no, this is, I'm like, he's like, Hey, I just want to, you know, let you know that, you know, if, if you're, if you're interested and you need, I'll be more than happy to talk about them. One of my favorite bands. And I was just like, Holy shit. Thank you. But no. Um, and, uh, I did it without, I thought it'd make it a little more real. Yeah, man. Well, the thing is, is that I think, you know, a lot of people expect things like that to just be this, like the story of agnostic front, but it's it, agnostic front is just kind of the secondary character. It's more the story of, you said, yeah, I mean, we don't have to go through no, it. No, no, it's fine. It's, it's the story of, of Roger and, and, and Vinny, Vinny yeah. and it just happens to be there in a band and, yep. and, 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 in a band in New York in the, 80s and you know or whatever and and until now or whatever but um i always dislike when somebody who might when i feel like that's a cheap ploy like what you you, we we talked about early on you remember i talked to you about it and i said this is what i'm thinking about doing you're like you you're i think your exact words were that's fucking ballsy and i I, said and you said but it would work and i and because I remember talking to you about it. I talked to a couple people about it and you were one of the few people that said I should do it because it would make it a little bit more legit in the sense that we don't need to pander to, you know, rock stars and on our yeah. scene and what we do. Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, Especially dudes that might not have been there and, and then all of a sudden our scene became kind of cool for some reason. Well, and believe it or not. Be, I know a lot yeah. of people have been around or yeah. whatever. But They're just doing bigger things now and it's yeah, not, yeah, yeah, but they yeah. still, there's a couple people, there's a bunch of people out there that I've learned over the years that are like, massive like massive bands or massive celebrities and like you know guy will show up at an af show and i'll be like yeah roger you know that guy's here he's like oh yeah man like, yeah, oh, yeah. Hold on. yeah there we go um you know he's like you know, roger you know i remember this who was it? i shouldn't say uh, um but a dude showed up and i remember you know just looking over and going oh roger you know that guy he's like oh yeah yeah you know he's, he comes see us every time I'm like holy shit yeah yeah just things like that you know well you know people don't realize like how big of an influence agnostic front's been like in, in music, not just punk rock or hardcore or metal, like yeah. just in general, but they're, they're that big because of who they are, not just the band, you know, like, the, like a lot and of what people. The, and a lot of it has to do with, I think the first impressions that they, they made on people when they came around on their first few tours. Yeah. Because I wasn't lucky enough to see them when I was, you know, a kid. I didn't even know who the hell they were when, you know, in the 1980s. I wasn't even into that stuff. Um, I was riding my BMX bike and, you know, shooting guns in the woods. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. Know? But like, you know, my, my, it, it's just, I don't know. It, it's it, what they, they accomplished. And I keep on hearing, I keep on hearing a lot. Every time I talk to one of these people, I hear somebody talking about it you know, back, back then they always say like, you know, there's, there's somebody, you know, we see, we see, you know, hear this band agnostic front, you know, they come out and they just, they didn't talk. They just come out and just go. And it was just like an explosion of energy. And everybody explains it that way. It's like, I've never seen anything like it. I think Pete Kohler, I think it was Pete that said it in his, in their new book, uh, Pete and, and, uh, and Lou's new book. I think he said, there's hardcore and then there's agnostic front. And he said, I, I don't want to quote, misquote him. Actually, I have the quote. I thought it was really, really rad. I'll tell you about it. I'll tell you right now. It's really great. It's in, it's in their new book. So it's, it's, uh, it's legit. I'll read it right here. It says, I got it right. Give me one second. 
it's a good quote. It's worth it. Here we go. He says, P. Cooler says, uh, everyone says this hard, uh, this is hardcore and that is hardcore, but Agnostic Front is New York hardcore and there is a difference. I thought that was really kind of like cool because it's like, you know, AF and New York hardcore is different. It just is than anywhere else. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Always has been. Absolutely. Always has been. And, um, AF, I think has carried that torch from the first, from day one, even to today. <laughs> Sounds like I can back a Mad Max set or something. Yeah, well, we kind of are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're almost we're almost in Mad Max time. So I'm. Yeah, I know you're ready. You got I'm the ready. bikes here that look like you, man. We, we, we got the bikes. We got the we got all the things we need to survive. Yeah, and I, I know you got your kale farm dude, going on. I, and I almost <laughs> brought you something. I got some. I tell you, man, I got some. I, I made some amazing kale this year. I figured out. I finally feel. I was telling my wife yesterday. I finally feel like I'm a kale master. Yeah, like it's not easy to grow. Well, like, that's going to be your <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. on 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 the episode. Uh, and this is our, not code for weed, by the no, way. No, we're, we're not talking. We're not talking <laughs> weed. Like I, I I grow kale and I grow a lot of it. I know, dude. <laughs> You're like the only one I know that like like not only did you just start growing kale, like but you started building like yeah. structures to build kale and it's, you, you should save my life so, the yeah. shit they say my like literally i had fatty liver disease yeah. and um you know i ate this shit like nonstop, and it was it's crazy what that shit did to me like it's so anyways now i have like four different kinds i'm growing it's really hard with caterpillars Str- like, strains of kale oh, different strains of kale yeah there's, there's a very different but the, the I, I finally this year found the right stuff uh that is fully organic but it's a, a really good insecticide um so these caterpillars they'll eat the leaf and then they die they fall right off and you can take it and you can wash it that day and eat it so it's like it's fully organic oh that's cool yeah not to make this about kale no 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 yeah. so that's what that's what it, on the episode i was gonna say ian mcfarland <laughs> kale master i dare you <laughs> oh, dude. You <laughs> don't, 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 you don't, don't worry about it's it true. <laughs> hey, it's true i mean it's true i mean i'm i I, I, I think a lot of fucking kale, but now more than ever, I think it's important. And, 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 you know, I know you're not like in like Austin, you know what I mean? But you're, you're just outside the city. Yeah. You, you don't need a lot of room to be able to grow some of your own food. No. And you can do it in your kitchen. Some of you can get different yeah. shit. To, to, I mean, I don't know about kale, but like, you know, I know you can grow tomatoes in the house and they have like things for that. But I think now more than ever, that's a, that's a lost art. That's kind of important for people to get back into, man. You know? Yeah. It's, it's kind of, it's kind of cool. I work around my house a lot i mean these days i don't go anywhere i stay in my house and my kids and um like i guess i, I consider it an honor that you're even here you know i, know, I really do like you <laughs> know what I mean? well you haven't i haven't seen you in it's six months i know yeah, I, haven't, I haven't gone nowhere man i know i know i'm I staying know. the fuck inside i know I know, I know, dude. Don't no. step on my property. Don't come <laughs> on my driveway. Just don't, keep going by. Don't snatch my kale. Yeah, don't touch my kale. Yeah. Um, but like, you will yeah. feel the wrath of the kale master. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's 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 not like it doesn't define my life by any means, but um, you know, it's uh, it's it's something that. All right, dude. Thank you. That's think, never happened. Well, it's it's because we're doing this. I know. I know. It's uh, all right. Yeah. Anyway, you made your point. Yeah. Um, not you, but the thing. Yeah. Uh, just as a uh, halftime update, halfway through the steel reserve can, it gets a little <laughs> bit better. Um, <laughs> just just in case everyone. Dude, I can wondering. smell that thing. From oh, it's here. horrible, dude. It, it smells it's, like it smells like sour Kool Aid. Uh, it's the worst. That's pretty much what it tastes like. Sour Kool Aid. That's it's a like, good word. It's like it smell. It's all right. All right. That's I, ridiculous. What the fuck, man. So I've done 30 episodes prior to you. Yeah. Probably 27 of them have been here, and we've yeah. never had a beeper like that. I'm literally, you know it's on the, on the side of my waist right now. I'm yeah. really about to go fucking <laughs> uh, experiment uh, with ballistics. Yeah. Um, but anyway, man, so, you know, not to get out too off off the rail here. Um, so, yeah, man, so you, you uh, kind of had an, you had the idea of the story you wanted to tell. And then you started to, uh, you, you met with Roger and hung out. And well, before, before I even did, it was just, I, I, the biggest thing is I had to convince Roger and Vinny to do it. Sure. Because I had been talking to them for years about doing it, but not this way. Yeah. Um, they had their own vision of what an agnostic front film would be. As yep. Roger has a lot of visions for it. everything should be AF. He controls every aspect of it. Um, I saw it very, very differently. And... Um, we had a very big talk about it, and at first they were very not cool with it and very uncomfortable. 
And um, because the biggest thing was, once they said that they would do it, they would be cool with it. Um, they would. I said, okay, awesome, but you get no say in it. Like you can't change anything or anything like that. And then I, I never forget Roger's face. He's like, what? He's like, I was like, <laughs> this isn't. This isn't a. I'm not gonna waste my time with a um, an EPK. Um, to, you know, to boost your ego. Um, I'm just not interested in that. And he was, uh, I don't know, he was kind of, I don't know if we were taken back or he was kind of like, he, he's not one to re release control. Yeah. Um, in anything in his life. Sure. Um, but I, given your personality, you probably oh, could, wait, could respect that. Oh, yes. Yeah. I mean, well, I'm not going to, I mean, he'll be, you, you probably even, he's probably talked to you about it. Him and I clash heads like, <laughs> oh, oh, oh my God, man. Him and I butt heads like, we've been in a couple big arguments, pretty good ones. Um, but at least we're, we're smart enough to get our friends that we can stop and then say, all right, well, let's think about this. You yeah, stopped sure. yelling. I stopped yelling. Okay, stop. Um, but it's just because he, I mean, he's just, He's been screwed a lot, man. Sure, like, sure. Because he's he's very generous with people. He's very upfront and honest. And I think sometimes people take you know kindness for weakness. Yep. And um, uh, I'm just that's not you know me. But yep. um, I had to convince him of that, and uh, you know, of letting me have full control over it. And you know, I've said this many times, but like he, I didn't let him see anything until we were done. Nothing. And it really drove him insane. Oh, I know. I, I did have conversations about that for sure with him. Like, yeah. he's like, like, especially when he knew I saw it. And he's like, dude, no, 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 yeah. I'm, not, I'm not saying nothing. Yeah. I was like, it's dope. It's yeah. awesome. He wasn't happy. He was, he was pretty pissed at me because yeah. like, and I was like, well, I mean, it's not really your place to say, man. Like, I mean, <laughs> I, all, <laughs> I'm not trying to be a dick here, but like, you know, it's just, it's just, y y we need to make it a certain way. And, and you got to trust me and let me just do this. And, you know, once he saw it, it was, it was, he was really taken back. And, sure. Um, but I, I mean, I would never let someone make a film on me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, well, but that's what I mean. That's what I was trying to say is like, like, like that yeah. is major. Like you, yeah. you know, like, and we both know like how much Roger, you know, the, takes control of the band, like, yep. and, and, and is focused on that and, you know, the energy that he puts in and the control he has with that. So for him to kind of re release that, is a is a nod to you you know like that he, so. he, like he had that he trusted you enough with it yeah. with the story to to let you tell the story how you needed to tell it and and to have no control because like like you just said you would never let anyone do a story a, a thing about your life like no way. like think about the level of respect you would need to have for somebody mm -hmm. to say all right and let them do it without you having any involvement yeah. I mean, so, I mean, I just, I'm just, I, I, recognize I think that's that. cool. You, I mean, you know I, I recognize, I, mean? I understand that. But at the same time too, if I had done a film about just agnostic front and it was just about them, you know, of, of course he's, Oh yeah. Like, I mean, I, because the yeah. thing is I wasn't there. Like there's well, the way that I approach this was much differently. He just sat and told me his life, his story, his personal like, feelings and, and, you know, that's a much different thing sure. than doing a discography film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, it, it, with, you almost need someone to sift through your, your life to tell it in a way that's, you know, interesting. Not so much, it's just not more, that's not the right word, but more like, um, I don't know, it's a non-biased opinion and a different perspective. Like, well, actually, I... Yeah, you think it happened that way, but then to kind of look at it this way, he's like, oh, you know, so it's like you, you just have to kind of look at things from different lenses, I think, um, and maybe put yourself in someone else's shoes. I, try, I, had, I had to learn actually a lot um, in this to put myself in actually his shoes too, because I know there was times it was like, it was just, you know, he had a heart condition. Um, during, he still has it. You know, he had the heart condition the whole time making a film, which is a whole nother worry. So I also didn't want to contribute to his stress of him knowing that someone is making a movie about him that potentially is going to be seen by a lot of people. At that time, he just thought fans, he never in a million years thought it was going to be Showtime or the Sky Network. Um, because when that happened, you know, luckily he had seen the film because I can't imagine if he hadn't seen the film and I had told him that. That would have been a much different story. Yeah. As it is, when I told him he could come see the film, he said, hold on a second. And he got back on the phone and he said, I just bought, he called me back. He said, I, I just bought tickets. I'll be out there in the morning. I'm like, what? He's like, I'm taking a red eye tonight. He lives in Arizona. 
Yeah. Like he was, he, I remember I told you, I was like, I called you, he's fucking drunk. He's, yeah, no, I, <laughs> he's just coming now. Like, you, you told me, you, you were like, yeah, I just told Roger you can see the film. I was like, oh yeah, that's cool. And he's, you're like, yeah, he's coming tomorrow morning. <laughs> I was like, from Arizona? <laughs> like, like he that. literally bought a ticket and then literally went to the airport <laughs> and like flew out. And the best part of this whole thing is when he drove in, when he flew into, uh, you know, my, my old business partner went and picked him up. 9 a.m. comes in. I'm like, we'll just go get some breakfast, man. He's like, no, 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 let's watch it now. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm yeah. like, Roger, it's like, I just woke up. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I don't, I don't want to watch the movie right now. He's like, no, 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 now. Yeah, 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 and yeah. And I remember yeah. I, I said, all right, man, I gave him a hug. And uh, I said, it was good to see you. And I said, this might be the last hug we do. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what? And I was like, yeah, I mean, you haven't seen the movie yet. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, it was, it was a good experience. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be done with it, but I'm also, you know, I'm st- I still, I still get asked a lot about it. I still get people sure. hit me up every day. It did really, really well on, on Blu-ray sales and, um, a lot of people bought it. Um, and I'm still, I just signed, I actually just signed a deal three, four weeks ago, uh, for a worldwide distribution deal, uh, with, uh, uh, uh principal media in, uh, in, uh, Los Angeles. Um, so they are, I signed a deal with them to, uh, basically distribute the film in every territory in the entire world. So I'm done doing it independently. I'm yeah, tired yeah. of people ripping me off. Yeah, um, I, I can't take another rip off. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose it. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. And, and we'll get into that. But, but, but before we get into that, sure. um, because this, what we're going, to, what I want to ask about now, kind of predates that anyway. But you know, you start off making a documentary, and it's about two guys in a you know, and the, and, uh, you know, hardcore scene and, um, and, you know, like you said, even Roger just thinks this is going to be seen by like fans and it's going to be, you know, like a independent level film or whatever, but it ends up getting picked up by Showtime. Yeah. And like, I mean, one, you know, like what kind of fucking validation was that? You know, it's was- <laughs> fucking crazy. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I, 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 I couldn't believe it fucking happened. I couldn't believe that I that I got a call asked about that. The asking, you know, if if they could see it. Well, even before that, just to back up a second, like, did you think you were gonna like you spent a solid at least year on the road with all these film festivals? Mm-hmm. Did you think it was gonna get picked up as heavy as it did by even all the film festivals? Well, they were flying you all over the place. Well, what what happened was it it wouldn't happen exactly like that. What happened was when I release the film uh the first place it, it screened uh was at uh the doc nyc film festival in new york city it was a film festival i really wanted to be in at that point when it premiered was uh i want to say it was uh was it this was it fuck i can't remember what month it was. i think it was november i think it was october november it was still cold out um and it, it premiered there and then after that um, I started doing a bunch of festivals, but it wasn't a year. It was only a couple months because Showtime hit us up in the spring. Well, yeah. I, I, so, what I'm saying, but hold on, but, yeah. but I'll tell you this, but the, what I'm saying is, is that negotiation with them was about five months. So it was a long time and I still didn't believe it was going to happen. It's like, you know, these things take forever to get done. And uh, lawyers like to send contracts out to look at on Friday afternoons, it seems like, so that... <laughs> You don't, you know, especially long weekends, you don't get things Mondays to get them back Tuesdays. It's like, you got to wait three fucking days and this happens constantly. Um, it's just, I guess the way industry works, but, um, the negotiations back and forth took forever. And the big thing was that I wanted to own the film. So Showtime doesn't even own it. Technically they licensed it from me as a, uh, premiere. They wanted to premiere the film and they wanted to have the premiere and they wanted it to be called a Showtime film. So the first place that actually plays it in network, it's basically that's what it is, or it premieres on this network. The big thing with Showtime is that it should Showtime Presents and it had their logo before it and then it was, you know, in the titles, which was pretty fucking cool. So, yeah, and that's what I'm saying. It was not only was it like Showtime wanted it, it became like a Showtime film. And yeah. I remember like, you know, even turning on Showtime. Never never mind the relentless amount of commercials for it. Yeah. Um and and then you turn on Showtime and it was like on the on demand. It's in like right on the main page as like yeah. one of the featured things and like and they were all over it. It was it was I think that was I don't know, like, you know, even from an outsider perspective, like that was just a win on the validation of like our world. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, that's what and, it felt like to me in a lot of ways, but I didn't want to say that publicly, but if that's what it felt like. Yeah. I, you know, I just happened to be 
making it. Like, you Yeah, you're the one that you were the conduit for it. Right. But it was like, you know, like, you know, fuck yeah, man. Like, you know, like my, my father could watch that. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's like, oh, that was the shit you were doing. You know, you know, you know, whatever. And, 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 or anyone like, you know, some dude in fucking Tuscaloosa, fucking wherever well, is going to be like brought into the world, you know? Well, that's a, that's, that, that is the biggest thing I think that I took away from this, this film. I'll be completely honest with you with doing film festivals and, screenings all over the world. I mean, I, we did, we did, I think 19 film festivals and that's a fair amount to do, but we're, we were doing them so much that you would go and it's five, usually like three to five days you talk and travel because usually at a festival screens at least a couple times. Um, and we spent shit, probably like, I want to say like, it was about a year. It was about a year. Um, yeah, I, I think I was gone for about, uh, I think my wife and I figured it was like, it was like 75, 85 days, you know, that, that first year of 2018, um, just all over the world. And the biggest thing that, that I took away from it was that it wasn't just like hardcore kids, punk rock kids, people in their forties and fifties, you know, it was everyone and people were bringing their parents, which I thought was really interesting because I would afterwards during the question and answers a lot, I would get a lot of people that would stand up and say, I brought my mother here today. And you know, then that, you know, she would ask a question or say something. And then I remember this one uh, woman stood up and, and said, I understand my daughter so much more now. And she said, thank you for making this. And I was like, it was a very simple mom thing. Thank you. You know, I was like, but it had such weight with me. And I think it had so much weight for that with that daughter because she was just like, she looked at her mom and I was, I think, I think it was like a big moment for them. And it's funny because when my mother saw the film, uh, she saw it in April in Boston and, uh, her reaction was, she goes, it, it, it makes, everything makes a lot of sense now. And she wasn't talking about the film. She's talking about me. So, you know, obviously I think that's the biggest thing. You know, there was, there was people down in, um, Atlanta that, um, there was a gentleman that came and his first question, I'll never forget this first, first question, a 16 year old kid stood up. And he said, I'm new to hardcore and I've seen a bunch of bands and my dad had me listen to you guys and said, I have to listen to you guys first. And, you know, Roger and Vinny were both kind of like, this is, you know, they're on stage for the first time. It was the first time they ever seen the film together and me in the same room. And the, the kid looks at, you know, Roger and he says, thanks for, you know, doing this, man. And then the father stood up and he said, I just got to thank you guys. And the kid started like quivering, his voice started shaking. And then the father started tearing up and then... Roger started tearing up and then the dude in the back room stood up and started clapping and saying, it's okay, Roger, we love you, man. And then like, it was like this room of like bro hugs everywhere. And it was like the weirdest thing, but the coolest thing, because it made me feel like there was like this cross generational, like thing going on where everybody was like understanding it and understand having a moment. It was, I don't know. It's just, I, 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 I don't mean to elaborate that much on it, but you know what I mean? It was like, no, no, that's, that's cool. It, but- it was, it was, it's crazy that it kept happening and it happened a lot. It would happen to Roger a lot too on the road. Um, he would, cause he was at the same time as the book that the film was being I don't know, on the film festivals, Roger's book came out. Yeah. So it's like this, he always says it's this great companion piece that goes together um, they kind of complement each other. They're very different, but they complement each other. And, and I think they, they, they do, but yeah. um, it was interesting to, to see people's reaction on the road. I got a lot of people saying, thank you for doing this uh, for the, for the, for the scene and whatnot. I just got a, I mean, was, I, the same thing happened in like New York a lot. Um, I just got a, a letter, uh, a package yesterday from Apollo Wong. She's in the film. She's one of Roger and Vinny's really old friends. And she just sent me a message just saying, all the message said was that he and thanks for sticking out and doing this thing. It was like out of nowhere. And she just said it. Just, I don't know, it just made my day. Yeah, like yeah. I get a lot of people saying thank you for making it. I think that's awesome because that's about as much as I get out of it. I haven't got any money. <laughs> so, yeah, I would. You know. and, and, you know, the thing is, you know, and I've talked about this a little on the on the. Podcast. I didn't do it for the money either. No, I, mean, I yeah, know, yeah. I know. And we're, we're going to talk about that because yeah. I know you got to. Uh, I do love a vengeful Ian McFarland, so I I want to I, I want to I want to get know, into don't that. Don't poke the bear. <laughs> but but just you know uh, before we kind of go go over there, um, it's weird now because like you know and and this is you know, I brought this up before on the podcast like when I first got into hardcore it was mid eighties, and there was probably 
or punk and any of that stuff. You know, there was like, depending on what you consider punk and not yeah. whatever, but there was about five to nine years or five to eight years of history yeah. before me. And, you know, I was still a kid when I got into it, like mm -hmm. 85. I was like a kid, like middle school. Mm -hmm. So I didn't get everything. But, you know, I know there was only a few years before me. And, um, but that's 85. Now it's 2020. Mm -hmm. You know, now there's like 40 years of fucking punk rock and hardcore and metal. So it's, it's transgenerational. Yeah. So it's. A lot of know, stories to be told there. Yeah. Yeah, right. But it's like, you know, like some of the stuff that we listen to is would be classified as oldies yeah, yeah. or like classic rock. It's crazy. Oh, yeah, I know. But it's crazy that it's sustained, you know, cause everyone, th and, you know, at first they think it's a fad or like yeah. whatever, but I mean, there's something about it that's so necessary that it lives and it changes and ebbs and flows and, you know, changing of the God, but there's still a lot of, there's still enough people around that were around when I was a kid that are still around, yeah. that are still there, active in some way or another. I don't, you know, and I don't know, that just speaks to, I think, to the power of it. And I think somehow, you know, in a way, you know, not not somehow or in a way, but definitely that film, you know, uh, um, encompasses that or, or shows that. Right. It doesn't show it directly. It's just more the story of Roger and Vinny. But the story of Roger and Vinny, it, you know, is, 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 you know, it's, it's a portrait of hardcore. It's a portrait of Roger. And yes, exactly. And it's, it's, a it's a portrait of, of both. Yeah, it's yeah. a portrait of friendship and, the, and, yeah. and everything comes along with a good and bad. Yeah. So it's, it, that's what makes it different. And I mean, I also, you know, didn't want to make it the same as a, you know, discography film because I wanted to leave the door open for those guys to be able to do it. Yeah. I just don't want to be the one to do it. I'm yeah. not, I'm not interested in that. But the, the discography film isn't, is is more of like a reporting of a timeline versus telling a story. Yeah, it, and but, you're you're a storyteller, right? I think it would make it a little bit different. And, and plus, it's like I mean, you can go to Wikipedia, you can read that stuff, you can yeah, you can read zines, you can read magazine areas, you can find out all that stuff. I mean, it presented in a in a film form would be cool. Yeah, I um, would definitely watch. I it. would too. I mean, yeah. and, and like, but I would just like to make it a little bit different so that you know, it 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 it, it presents itself in a way to become a little bit palatable to like mainstream, yeah. but at the same time, not taking away from the credibility of what it really is. And, and that's the important thing. That's is, the important thing to me yeah. because there is a way to do it. And, you, and then you your it. movie did it. You yeah, know, you I, I'm not, I, I wouldn't, I would tell you otherwise, you know, yeah. that, you know no, what I, I mean? Know. And yeah. that's what was beautiful about it is yeah. that it was like, it was, you know, like, you know, Susie, the 60 year old hairdresser could watch it. And, you know, Mike, the 22 year old, kid that just got into hardcore or punk or whatever can right. watch it and then you right. know the guy that's been in new york for 40 years that going to shows can watch it and right. everyone's going to appreciate it maybe in a different way but or, or or to different levels of connectedness with it but it's it's a story that transcends it all yeah but it doesn't it doesn't um disrespect any of it in yeah. any way you know it, it's you know it's done in a very fucking well i appreciate all the help way. that you gave me man because i, I mean just as a soundboard and, uh, you know, a, a, a sanity soundboard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because, right. like I said before, there was a time period where I went about four months where I actually had to go see the doctor because there was so much crazy shit going on with me, like yeah. health-wise, that it just came down to sleep and food and maybe doing some bunch of things I shouldn't be doing um, to keep myself going, you know. And, like, it's, it's uh, really takes a toll on you. Um, physically, emotionally, um, you sure. know, and as passionate and yeah. uh, obsessive. You Plus, know, and I'm not saying also, it in a bad word, but as 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 into your projects as you get, like there's there's gonna be some level of that. But yeah. this one particularly, you know, was a little bit different, is because it's too close to me. Yeah, like it, this, all this stuff, music wise, is very close to me, because I didn't want it to be a bad representation of not only the band, but just everything that I find important in my sure. lifestyle, because I know a lot of other people like you and, and so many other people out there feel the same way. We're all, we're all like-minded people and yeah. in lifers. Um, yeah. And in, in lifers in that sense. And, and be, to be completely honest, I hate like, you know, I don't really like, like, you know, I don't live hardcore and talk hardcore constantly. So, but, but what that, what my time and, and that's in the scene and everything that came along with it 
has, has kind of created, you know, my social, you know, network and, 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 um, my, my, you know, my, my now kind of led to my work, you know, in a lot of ways, um, because there's a lot of people in very high music and entertainment places that grew up on DIY punk rock, hardcore music. It's and, insane. I know. And, 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 and not only just in the music industry, but like all over, I think there's like, like I say, there's, there's something about it that is so different than any other kind of music. And it's not even just talking about the music itself. It's the scene around it. And w maybe it's the people that attracts or, or, or once you're in it, like the, the accessibility of everything, it's like more like, no, dude, you don't need anyone else to do this. You can just do it yourself. Yeah. And then, and then you do, but then, you know, and at first it's a hobby. Like everyone, like people start zines and it's a hobby. And then people start record labels as a hobby. You put their friends like record out or put your own record out yeah. or you do this and that. And then it starts getting a little more serious, more serious, more serious. And all of a sudden now that's your fucking job or yeah. that's how you live in or, you know, like, you know, like, or even indirectly for me, like, you know, like this is my world, like, you know, and so. You know, and I tried, I did other shit that mm -hmm. I thought was cool, like, you know, and I did it, I did it. And I was like, at some point, I was like, no, I'm just, I can't be in the fucking regular world, dude. Like, yeah. and then, so I made my own little world yeah. and that's where I live. You know what I mean? And, you know, a motorcycle shop's not, not directly related to hardcore, but it is to me, like, you know what I mean? Or, or yeah. the tattoo shop, like, these are all things that were, yeah, you know, fringe culture us, and, like, us, yeah. and it's just, and now that that fringe culture has gotten big enough, there's an opportunity there for a lot of people to have businesses within it catering to those people. Yeah. And it, that just add, it adds a whole nother layer of like just coolness because it's, I mean, you don't do a lot of contracts on hardcore music. <laughs> it's yeah, not, yeah. You don't have to like, it's, it's just pretty simple, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, everybody, it's yeah. So I don't know. I mean, but yeah, I, it, it's a, uh, it's an interesting, uh, uh, genre of music to yeah. come up in. Yeah. Cause it, I've, I feel like it, spring springboards people into different career paths yeah. or different pathways. But the commonality is kind of people forging their own way. Right. It, 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 te it teaches you, at least it taught me, and you know, we've talked about this too. It's like, it really just instills this like DIY ethic yeah. that you can do almost anything as long as you really work hard at it and do it the way you want to do. It. And if you can't get it done, you know, at least you tried doing it the way you wanted to. And somebody didn't like, you know, manufacture it too. It's like, you know, you work with your hands. You're like, you're working, you're, you're, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a trade, you know, it's, we've talked about this too. It's like a, a lost working with your hands is like going away in this, not only in this country, but in this world. Yeah. But I you feel know? like it's starting to come back because yeah. there's a lot of people with college degrees and no jobs. And there's a lot of people in trade unions that are cleaning yeah. up and doing pretty well yeah, for themselves absolutely. and don't, don't have student loans and crazy shit to deal with, you yeah. know? Um, but yeah, man. So, so, uh, you know, you got picked up by Showtime and then it got picked up, you know, the other, the European stuff, uh, the sky, 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 sky network and which is, is, uh, is, it's a really big network, but it's, it's all over Europe, but, yeah. uh, the sky network in the UK, which is Ireland, Scotland, Wales, and England yeah. and all British military bases, uh, picked it up for streaming, um, and broadcast for, uh, Three years. Wow. Yeah. It will be done with Showtime this December unless they decide to renew it. So, and if not, it may end, it will end up on something else. I don't know. Is it still on there on demand? It's on still on their demand. They're still broadcasting it. Um, it still shows up for once in a while. Um, I st you still see, get the reports and stuff. Um, and it's, it's December 11th is the last date. Yeah. Um, but it's still not on iTunes anymore. It's yeah. not on Amazon. I, I haven't put back, put it back up on any of that shit. Now, is that what the deal you struck with the company in Los Angeles? Is that going to? It's a little different. They're, they're basically the distributors, but the deal I did with them is they're going to be the exclusive sales agent um, and distributor of the film. So it's a, not a traditional distribution deal where, you know, you just give them the film and then hopefully they give you a minimum guarantee. They call it MG, like a minimum guarantee. And then usually you never get more money than that. It's yeah. like, you know, they back this again. Oh, we did this. It cost this. And you had to get these dubs and just, it's like a constantly in the negative, you know? Yeah. And I didn't want that. So, um, I did a much different deal, um, where they uh, essentially are, excuse me, uh, selling it, um, all over the world in different territories and, um, uh, looking for opportunities, but they have an exclusive on it. So their, their deal is to sell it 
to in Germany, the Czech Republic, Sweden, France, all these places on TV networks. Okay. Um, and then streaming networks. As far as, and that's called SVOD. Um, it's called a, a streaming video on demand. And then there's TVOD, which is transactional video on demand. And that's your iTunes, uh, your, um, you know, your Amazon, sure. um, you know, Google, that you can download things and own a Vimeo. Um, I kept all those rights. And um, I, I just haven't put it up yet. Um, I'm still bitter about it in, in last year. But um, so, so if you don't mind, if yeah. I, I don't want to bring up uh, bad memories, but I, any chance for you to, to, to badmouth someone? I, it's like, you know, I, if I have a, it's voice, a rare thing, no, no. But, you know, maybe there's maybe there's uh, someone out here that knows someone involved in all that. And, you know, whatever. But, um, it, you know. It's it's weird because things were going so good, man, and you're getting so much steam and momentum, and you know you had the Showtime, you had you, you know all this stuff picking it up, and uh, you know did so good in all the film festivals, um, and then then you you got you got fucked, you know what I mean? And, and you, you know if, if you what happened? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, there's a really great uh, interview I did with Forbes magazine that explains it. Yeah. Pretty in depth, but the the what it basically boils down to is, since I owned my film and I kept all the digital rights, the TVOD stuff, and sold the streaming to Showtime and Sky, I could put this film up on all the transactional sites I wanted, and I decided instead of signing a deal with a traditional distributor and then never you know getting a small amount of money and then. In, and them backing me against the wall for the next 20 years saying, oh, this costs this, you know, you yeah. have to recoup this and all that. I decided I want to do things differently. And there's a couple sites um, that basically take your film and will put it up on the TVOD sites. The reason why they have to do that is because none of the TVOD sites allow independent filmmakers um, to put up their own stuff. So there's companies out there, there's five approved in the world, that now there's four. I think there's three now. Oh, another one? Um, yeah, they all, they're, they're all doing the same thing. It's happening to everybody. Um, they basically, their motto is, you know, we put the f power back in the filmmaker's hands. And they, you know, they have, you pay them X amount of dollars. In my case, it was about $15,000. And what they do is they put it in different languages. They basically are glorified quality control package house that they take it to all of the platforms and give it to them exactly the way that they normally get it. So they, all they have to do is take the files and plug it in and it works and everything's great. Um, and what they do is, is you pay them a fee or a percentage based on who is the one doing it. In my case, the company that I hired, they were called distributor, not distributor, distributor. And then their parent company is called go digital they pursued me extremely hard for a good year. I would get weekly calls, hey, and you know, just checking in, seeing if you're interested in doing this. We really think it'd be a great opportunity for you. We, and then they changed their tune to, we just, we want your film. We want this on the platform. What do we have to do to make it happen? Blah, blah, blah. They cut me all these crazy deals. And I finally said, okay, I'll do it. And the deal was, um, at the, after the first six months, well, they collect all your revenue too, by the way. They collect it all, but they don't take a percentage because I decided to go against better judgment from other people and do a percentage base. I decided to pay them a flat fee and then they collect my money and then hand it over to my account. There's nothing. I take the risk, not them. What they did is they told me that after six months, I would get my first payment. And then after that, it would be quarterly. Ooh. I guess it could have been worse, worse drinks, right? Yeah, yeah. We, 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 <laughs> truth, we, a truth, down steel, steel, yeah. watermelon steel reserve just <laughs> fell on the ground and it's just slowly such, trickling out. Such a gross color too. <laughs> so, you know, I put it, I decided to go with them and they put it, they, they put it up and they were, you know, going to pay me after six months. So the first month, the first week, if went to like the number one music film, not in the U S in the world. And I was like, holy shit, I made the right decision. And then it started climbing. And then it had like on iTunes, it was like it had its own, uh, you know, banner ad, which I didn't pay for. That just, they put that on because it was doing so well. And when that happens, the, the idea is if you get your film into the top hundred of iTunes, which is only based on analytics or 
I'm convinced maybe grease in a palm here and there. I don't know how it works. But um, regardless, I'm very grateful that mine got up there because I still to this day don't think it did the sales that. I think there was somebody behind there pushing the buttons and going, oh, I love AF, you know, just one of those people that we talked about. But I, don't, I can't confirm that. But regardless, it had to be doing really, really well. So it became the number one film, uh, music film, and then it came the number 23 documentary in the United States. And then it came, became the number three documentary in Germany and other parts of Europe. And that right there, it was just, it, it's one thing to have a music film, which is a sub genre, but documentary is a huge genre. And once you get into that hundred on iTunes, there's only, at that time, there was only a hundred that would show up in the queue that you could scroll through. So those are the ones that come up. After that, you have to type in and dig for it. So you have automatic sales because most people don't dig for shit on iTunes. They just see what's presented to them. And go, oh, that looks good. I'll take that. So when you have a banner, people are just going through click and going, oh, shit, guy, chest, tattoo. What's that, a prison movie? Oh, badass. Yeah, I'll take that. So people that don't even know the film are going after it. And then the people that do are like, this is really cool. And they want to support it. Long story short, uh, I went to get my payment. It was two days before, I think. Uh, two or three days before I was to be paid my big giant slump sum uh, from iTunes, six month sales, Amazon, six month sales, Google Play, six month sales, Voodoo, six month sales. Yeah. And, and the important thing is that this is the initial six months. This sales. is the first the, six months. The, that is your biggest thing, no matter yeah. what. And given mine and got number one, it was not a small amount of money. Yeah. I got a phone call from a dude that used to work there. And he said, hey, Ian, I become friends with him. I use that word loosely, friends. He said, I just got to give you a heads up. Get your money as fast as you can. They're going under. I'm like, what? He said, get your money out of there now. He goes, a lot of crazy shit's going on. Just get it. Well, I tried to do that. I started hearing things. And then I started hearing the really same was going on. Evidently, these pieces of shit had um, not paid a lot of people. And some filmmakers started getting really pissed off. No phone calls, you know, getting answered, no emails. So they went down at the place in LA and they knocked on the door to realize there was no one there anymore. These guys closed up shop and left. Now they left with 4,000 titles, just like mine, and not paying anybody. And they were big guys, man. So they basically hired a, a company that's a, um, a liquidation company so they wouldn't have to claim bankruptcy. And the company basically took over their assets and then they're paying off debts and then whatever money is left over gets dispersed amongst all the filmmakers. There's no fucking money. They yeah. took it all. And to recover that money is extremely difficult. I mean, th there's, they screwed over in 2018 alone. I was told that they brought on 1100 films just that year alone. Now, if each film is paying them say $2,000, not even my 15,000, 2000, that's significant money, you know, and not to mention the 4,000 titles that they're collecting revenue on, not to mention just the money that is the fee to get on the site and have them do the work. Because you remember, they're collecting all these titles. They collected, there was two films I know of that were owed over a million and a half dollars and yeah. didn't get paid. Yeah. And the thing is too, when you have a company like the films like that, the first money that's dispersed, if any at all, is going to go to them. Yeah, because they, they were with such huge yeah. amounts of volume yeah. of money, yeah. I mean, the same thing happened with my record label years ago. No, I remember that, yeah. Uh, we had a distributor. Yep. distributor went out of business, mm -hmm. and it's like, what do you sorry. Do? Yeah, I mean, you sorry. can show up. Yeah, sure, you can show up at somebody's house with a baseball bat. Like, yeah. But well, honestly, what the hell is that going to do? It's not going to get you your money. It's not going to get you money, but the fact of the matter is, these dudes risked me, ripped me off. Yeah. They And the thing is, I am convinced that they knew they were going under, and they were looking, grasping at straws or who can we bring in, you know, before we go under. Because they were so adamant. Yeah. That, and they were so focused on me coming in. Yeah. Like, and, and, and they were so like just non, like just going after me and relentless. And now, in, you know, hindsight, I'm like, they were pushing awful hard for me to come in. I think they knew what they were doing. 
I think yeah. it was calculated. Yeah, they they knew, so they saw that your film was getting yeah. like you know a lot of attention. And who's this guy? Know who's he gonna? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then so they were probably probably approaching a lot of people that they saw making some noise and mm-hmm. like get all this stuff in, make yep. all the money we can, and bounce the fuck out. I mean, I I I, I, I don't know. All I know yeah. is that um, it was a very 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 uh, it's a very sick feeling to be like robbed like that and in and, and fucking plain sight you know I, I know that there was some filmmakers that lost their shit um and i know that the attorney general was, was reached out to i was told that um some people reached out to the fbi um because we're talking like we're talking millions upon millions of dollars you said there's two titles that's three million dollars alone between yeah. the two you know never mind and that's only two uh to to um, filmmakers out yeah. of how many thousands? You yeah, know? exactly. And then not only that, but then think of the aftermath. Now, filmmakers, you put everything into your film when you're doing stuff independently. Most filmmakers are, you know, I have the luxury of being my job and what I do. Yeah, a but, lot of filmmakers don't. I know, but you might not say this about yourself or whatever, but like I know that you put a lot of your own personal. Like I know you had a GoFundMe and you had different things oh, yeah. and different ways, but I know you put a lot. Oh, Personally, of your own money, I put a ton in of of your own money, yeah, and yeah, into in to making sure that the film got done and, mm-hmm. and put it in because it's, you know, there's only so many times you can ask people for money. Yeah, exactly. There's only, and, there's only so many times, and and also it's like I just don't like asking people for money. Oh, I hate that. I shit. hate it. I hate the feeling of it. I hate like, I just ra- I, I would rather just like you know eat ramen, not tell anybody and just, you know, have the money, you know, whatever it takes. Like, I just don't yeah. like asking for money. Luckily I had a really, really amazing guy helping me out. His name is Scott Keys, who early on the film really saved, saved the film from just ever not coming out. Um, and, and very generous man, very cool guy. He became the executive producer. But, um, you know, when it comes to like these guys ripping me off, you know, what I was trying to say a second ago was that, you know, Think of the, the the filmmakers that are like right out of college, right? And they max out a credit card on top of their, you know, student loans. And, you know, they spent ten grand on this like, student film and they're getting no money and they can't pay it back. They not even a little bit. That, you know, in a year's time, that ten grand is like twenty two thousand, you know? And like it's just it's just a bad situation all around or how you look at it. Um, but it's taken me quite a while to be able to just it took me months to be able to even talk about it. I was so angry. Like I, I couldn't even, I'll be honest that day I literally left the studio. I started laughing. I went outside, I started laughing. And, uh, and then the wave of emotion came on after it was what has just happened because it, it, I had no way of paying back the money anymore. Like, and that is something I prom- made a promise. I promised the investor. I said, I would pay you back. I said, I, I'll, I, you have my word. Like you will be paid back. I, I can't promise how quickly, but I, I mean, I'll never go on a vacation again, you know? Not that I go on vacations, but like I'll never go on a vacation. I'm like, I'll, I'll drive, a, I'll ride my bike instead of, you know, picking up, you know, buying a car. Um, but it's just, I mean, they fuck it, fuckers, man. They fucker. <laughs> yeah. So if you know anyone that There's works a special for- place in hell for <laughs> yeah, fuckers yeah, like yeah. that, man. Like, yeah, that's just <clears throat> taking advantage of a lot of people, man. And, and, and you know, that's just straight scumbag shit. But, you know, the thing about it is just like anything else, like, you know, that's a huge fucking blow. Yeah. But you know, you're still going. Yeah, exactly. And that's the thing is too, is like, you know, I get that letter the other day or that little note, just a small note. It wasn't a letter. It was like a note with a, a, a couple of cool little things in it. that Paul sent me. And it's just, it was like, thanks for never giving up and keep on going or something like that. I have the note actually in the car, but like, it's just little things like that. And like, you know, it's small, but it really makes me feel like, that's a big thing, you know. People yeah. people recognize that I put a lot into it and sacrificed a lot. And the crazy thing is, though, and I think this alludes to something you said earlier. Like you said, there's not a lot of contracts in hardcore. You know, it's a lot of shits like handshakes or yeah. You know, like you know, like War Machine with Bridge Nine. Like Chris is like, yeah, I'll put that out. And I'm like, fuck yeah, dude. Like we don't. There's no like Chris. Con- yeah, this thing is too. Like Chris. I mean, I I knew there was a, a market to do it. You know, Blu-ray. I, I knew we could do something with it and be kind yeah. of cool. And that's the cool thing is too, is, is, you know, the it did really well. It's done very, very well. And Chris came in and, and, uh, you know, took a huge risk because I know that 
other people and his partners were just like a DVD Blu-ray man. It's yeah. not gonna come on, man. Nobody's doing that anymore. And I'm like, him and I both were like, nah, this will do it. Yeah, we can do it. I mean, well, I think a lot of people, you know, in the range age range that are like, you know, would appreciate it. Like, are still probably dude, DVD. You, dudes, you, you have any dudes? I, I get, <laughs> so, I get literally like five a week. Six a week, seven a week, I mean, five, six a day, people asking me for Blu ray, like DVDs. Do you still have DVDs? I'm like, I didn't make DVDs. I have a Kickstarter one. It's way more expensive than a regular DVD. Yeah. You know, I, I can't sell it for cheaper because it'd be really not cool to the people that, you know, funded the film. Sure. You know, yeah. with, and uh, so I got to sell it for that price. So it's, you know, it's a, it's a collector's thing, but, you know, oh my God, I get, I get, yeah. I, I, I had one dude ask me if I had VHS. <laughs> I had I had one or two dudes ask me, you know, like, come on, come yeah, on, man. Yeah, like, yeah. He's like, no, I just like the way it looks. I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah. all right, analog, all right. Yeah, man. we get the yeah. weird. There's all the people now, like cassettes are a big thing again, and yeah. or you know what I mean. Yeah. But you know, the thing is, it's like, I, as much as it sucks, but this was like your first film to go that far, and it's just you know another yeah. learning experience. Like we, it sucks that we can't take the hardcore sensibility of like word is bond and trust. Uh, you know, and you know, you know, of course there's been scumbags in the hardcore scene that have fucked people over in the past and years, but by and large, you know, more often than not, it's, that's not the case. People right. stand up. So it sucks. And it's like, it sucks that you got to go through life once you get out of like the shelter of our world into the general business world, yeah. you know, and it's like, all right, now you, now you got to lawyer up and fucking watch out for all these motherfuckers. Like you can't trust nobody, dude. Like that shit. That's a harsh reality of the world, man. Yeah, and I, and I, just, I can sit here and like, and I try not to like, you know, talk about it too much or bring it up too much. But it, you yeah. know, it, it is something that when I do talk about it with, you know, I tend to talk about it openly with with closer friends because I get asked sure. about it a lot. But like, um, it, it's it's definitely you know it's a blow, but at the same time, I don't know if I would be doing what I'm doing right now if it hadn't happened. Yeah, and that's that's the only thing that kind of keeps me sane is if this hadn't happened and this hadn't happened, then maybe that wouldn't happen. So it's like, you know, I'm, I'm pretty happy where I'm at right now and what's going on. Um, you know, I mean, I, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have traded it to do, to do it this way. Like to, like what I'm like, I think I'm the first punk rock guy to ever get in Forbes magazine. Probably. Yeah. I, and I'm not, a, I'm probably the poorest guy to ever get into Forbes magazine. <laughs> where yeah. They did a whole feature, you know, it's like, it's like, I don't, it's, it's just a weird thing, but like, um, that, that alone, that never would have happened. I, I never would have met all these people that I, I, I met some really great people, you know, along this whole journey of making this thing. And, um, you know, I've also learned quite a bit about, um, you know, my boundaries and what I'm willing to do what I'm willing not to do and, and what I have to stand up for when it comes to my sensibilities as a, as a storyteller. Um, it's, it's given me a lot of confidence in a lot of areas, you know? Um, but it's, it's done its thing. I think it's, I, I'm very proud that I think it's going to, I'm very proud that it's going to stand this. I think it will stand the test of time for quite a while. Yeah, man. Um, and it will last a while doing its thing. Yeah. Fuck but, yeah, man. So, yeah. So f dude, I'm, I know you had talked about earlier, maybe talking about some clips or something, some audio clips. Mm -hmm. Is that something you want to bring up or you want to fucking yeah, skip it? Yeah, skip I mean, that. Yeah. yeah. This, 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 this is so much. I mean, I, 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 it's like one of those things where like, I'm, I'm actually going to um, be releasing something for the film before Christmas. Um, that it's a couple of cool little things because the thing is, it's like, it just, I have to kind of like let this thing do its thing. And then I got to move on and start doing some other stuff. So it's like, um, it's just, it's been years of focusing on this thing. I know right now that I'm never going to, I don't think I'm ever going to do a film like this again, meaning I'm not going to, self-finance again i'm i just I, I don't think i can do that like I, I it's it was too difficult like maybe some small stuff yeah yeah um but but hopefully you don't have to now because now you've kind of shown and proved that you could do something yeah and then yeah. you get a, a now you get more people that might not be so might not be so dismissive next time I, oh yeah but i also say that now but at the same time like i might end up getting obsessed by this one idea which yeah. I'm, I'm obsessed by one idea right now and i'm 
I'm finding myself spending way more money on development than I decided I was going to spend. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I guess I'm doing it again. Yeah. <laughs> Even so, though 30 seconds ago, I just said, I'm not doing this again. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, I just bought an archive, um, from this dude, you know, access to this archive and, um, whew, holy shit. If I can make a movie out of this, this would be something else. Um, but you know, it's a, it's a long time between, you know, the, the idea and finding out what kind of footage is there and connections of people that are willing to talk about certain things and stuff like that. Sure. It's like this whole thing and it takes quite a long time. And then once you have all to, that all together, you take it to somebody and attach somebody to it that potentially has influence or can, can bring in a budget and you want to work with too. That's the other thing. Um, I luckily have in the last couple of years because of this film have met some of, you know, the, the best people I think I've ever met in my whole life. Um, and they happen to be like now I'm working with and, um, they've done some pretty big shit. <laughs> so it's cool. You know, I can learn from them. Um, yeah, man, you know? Yeah, no. And, and you know, everything's every, like you said, like, even though you go through some shit, that's like a punch in the fucking face. It's what you take out of it and what you learn from it. Like, that's just sometimes you need a punch in the face to put you on a different path or a different trajectory that brings yep. you where you really need to be. Mm -hmm. so you got to look at everything as like. You got to pivot. You got to pivot. You got yep. to you you fucking hustle and fucking yep. shake and fucking jive and fucking gotta, move around. You got to look at your surroundings and you got to pivot. And yeah. if, it, if it works, cool. Um, if not, try something else. Like, yeah. I just can't, I can't, I can't sit still like long enough even though I don't go anywhere, I stay in my fucking house. I can't sit still. I'm, I mean, I'm just like physically, I'm like constantly moving back and forth and pacing and thing. I, I mean, I do this late at night half the time. It's just, yeah. I'll, I'll wake up and I'll, I have a notepad right next to my bed because I'll wake up and I'll sit there for a second. I, I'll think of something and I'll write a list down and I'll write this down. It could be the date of tomorrow's list or it could be this next film idea I have or this new you know, audio doc idea I have. Well, there's something to be said about that too, that like sometimes when, you know, that old adage, you know, let me sleep on it. it there's, there's something to it because, you know, you're processing stuff at a different level yeah. when you're in sleep and then you wake up and, and the same with me, man. Like sometimes I wake up, you know, like, you know, oh, you got to write something. You got to write something for the lyrics or whatever. And you wake up and it's like, you got half a song in your fucking head. You got to scrambling to find the paper to write it down or, or you got an idea for, you know, a business idea or some or something else, and it's like, or a t-shirt design. Yeah, or like, some shit just comes be. out in the middle of yeah. the middle of the night. Your brain's working on some shit, and you wake up and you're like, "Oh shit, I gotta do it." Or something to be said about movement too. Like I get up, I go to the gym, and then while I'm at the gym, I think of a bunch of shit. See, yeah, that's something I gotta do. Then by the end of the day, I'm not thinking about shit. I'm just trying to fucking oh. persevere. But like at the beginning of the day, you know, like you know, I gotta go to the gym, man. I, uh, that's one thing I let go. Like even though I've lost more weight in the past, like. Yeah. A couple months, you know, but God damn. Moving heavy shit around definitely helps. I don't know yeah. what it is about it, but yeah, definitely, you know, like they were, when, when the gym was closed uh, with the, for COVID stuff uh, and I was going into the forest every day mm -hmm. and hiking was awesome yeah. and it was cool and it was like mellow and, you know, you know, and it was physical, but, um, you know, it was definitely head clearing and it was good to be alone, you know, in the, the woods, yeah, the, the, the uh, haunted, uh, Bridgewater Triangle, Freetown Forest, yeah. you know, but you know, I didn't see, I never saw any wacky shit. You see some wacky shit like <laughs> scribed in the trees or like fucking weird shit, yeah. but you know, like whatever. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like I need to like go to the gym, gym. Like now yeah. that the gym's back open, I feel so much better. Like, you know, and, and I don't know what it is, you know, it's just, I don't know if it's just caveman shit, like leftover caveman DNA or something. Like, I don't know what it is, but it, it feels so much better like lifting and, I'm uh, able to deal with stress better from that. Well, I mean, everybody's, you got to do what's, what's going to make you feel good every yeah. day. I, I, I mean, my thing, honestly, like I was saying, writing lists, I write so many fucking lists and like, yeah. and, and I, what makes me feel good is crossing off things. Yeah. And, and, go, and that for me is like a really good day. If I can <laughs> get through and I have like over half of my stuff that I wanted to do done, I'm, I never hit all of it, but I come close and like, I try to hit it all and knock it off as throughout the day and, I, but the gym is just, just can't, I can't fit it in. Yeah. No, it's, it's tough. Like, um, I got to do it before work or it's not going to happen. Yeah. Like I got to do it. I get up, feed my dogs, take them out, 
Yeah. I go right to the gym. Luckily, my gym is right in between my house and Chopper Head. Yeah. Because and then otherwise, I feel like a piece of shit if I walk if I drive because I got to drive right by it. and it's like the drive of shame if I missed it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So there's I've been account- running for I mean, accountability I, there. You know, I've been running for for years and and like I, I I I like running. I mean, well, I say that, but I really don't. But yeah, I. I you know, the road I live on, I mean, I've been almost hit like twice. And I, I, you know, I think about it, I'm listening to myself, I'm making up excuses for not going to the gym. But like, the fact of the matter is, you know, it's just something that I do, do got to get working on that. Yeah. Well, you ain't, you ain't going to the gym anytime soon. Just, yeah. you need, we need this shit to blow when I, over. Yeah, yeah. When I see, when I say gym, I mean work out. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I need yeah, to go yeah. to the fucking gym. Yeah, like, yeah. fuck that. That was, was like fucking yeah. three months of strong arming to get you to come here. Yeah, it ain't happening, <laughs> man. I'll just stay away, yeah. man. I know. Yeah. Um, it's gonna be even worse, man. When you get your studio done in your backyard, you yeah, know, you know you're never gonna leave. The, I know the, it's uh, kind of cool. The McFarland compounds. I'm excited about <laughs> it, man. It's hopefully everything go through. It's gonna be for real. It's gonna be a real thing. Um, I've met with a couple builders, and um, I mean, hey, I mean, I I'd love to do it. We'll see if I can make it happen. It's just it depends on money and things like that. Like you know, yeah, is in everything. Hey, but even like Gallo was talking about that. He's he's uh he um. He built building, a nice place. Building his art studio in his backyard. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, um, like I said, I've, I, I, gotta, I know a guy that's a contract. I mean, this is like having this. I mean, God damn it. I, I mean, I don't even build bikes and I wish I had this. Like, I just make shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what it is, though? And then the problem is, <sighs> this is going to sound really horrible. And, and this is no disrespect to any, like, regular customer of Chopperhead or whatever. Yeah. I liked it so much better when we were just a fabrication shop and we could shut the door. Yeah. But having a showroom yeah. and the parts counter and all that, yeah. it's important. Yeah. And I love it. And it, it creates a sense of like, I don't know, for lack of a better word, community around motorcycle stuff. It's a place for people to go or whatever. But it's such like, it's a double-edged sword because now you're tethered to it. Yeah. Like before we could just shut the doors and go take a ride and it yeah. didn't matter because, you know, we weren't, we were just a fabric. We were building bikes and shipping them, or whatever. And now having that, it's like you got to be here. You got to have regular hours and whatever. And so you're a little more, you're a little more chained to it. Um, but yeah, I don't even know how we got on the. F- yeah, but it's just the- yeah, but you know, man. So I don't get as much time in the back making shit. Is that's what I mean? And yeah. it's like running, just more running the whole business. You know what I mean? Sucks. It just looks cool as shit, man. Like it just see, there's just to, to, to nobody that is obviously people that aren't here, but like it, there's like just bike after bike after bike up on a lift. Three of them on lifts, other ones just sitting down. Look bad. It just looks badass as hell, man. It's like yeah. cool as hell. And you guys are working with your hands. I've always really, as you know, this we've talked about this. I've always really admired people building bikes. I've always, it's a, it's a, it's a form of of art. My father actually built. Triumph. I've told you this. Yeah. My father. You showed me the pictures. Yeah. My father built a Triumph in our first, our fourth story apartment when I was a kid. When I was, I think I was my first two years of my life. My father built a Triumph on the uh, kitchen table, uh, the living, uh, the uh, coffee table in the living room. So yeah. like, there's like, I think there's like pictures of me like crawling around with like this Triumph sitting right in the middle, of <laughs> like the living room, oh, fourth floor. He'd have like, you know, those pictures. I showed you the pictures of like his neighbors like helping him get it out. You know. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, it, pictures. There's got to be a picture of you somewhere like rolling over like the, like a motor pot or oh, something. Oh yeah, yeah. Like I'll a, guarantee. Exhaust yeah. pipe or yeah. some yeah. shit. You know yeah. what I mean? Fucking around like, but, but yeah. yeah. And 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 that was the crux of the Chopper Head DVDs. It was like yep. focusing on those guys, not yeah. not big shops. The backyard builder. The, the, yeah, the guy, the home builder. I still want to do something, man. I, I know. I, 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 know. St- I still. I still. I st- every time I see a fucking bike show, I'd be like, ugh, like man, we could have done this so much cooler. Like, they're so they're so fucking corny, oh, dude. Most of them. God. Man, and it, and it's all drama, and oh. and you know you've been on the ride. There's all these fucking people. Like, how many times have we been reached out to about this shit? Oh and my then god, it's always the same story. Oh, you guys, are like, we love what you do. We love you guys. What you're doing, blah blah blah. Yep. Uh, let's let's develop a pilot. And, and then they give the pilot comes, script. and then it's, it's like script. everything we don't do. Yeah. And it's like, no, you don't like, you're just looking for some fucking lunkhead yeah. to fill a fucking, no, you say this pot. and yeah. you say that, like, what, what I remember you, that you, first one. I you was heard like, me like, I'm not a fucking actor, yeah, man. No, don't I'm, fucking give me lines. I remember that first time <laughs> those dudes, remember those dudes? And I was like, I was like, what is this? I was like, they, they gave you a fucking script for this. And I was uh, like, yeah, I was like, dude, don't do that. No, like, hell no, 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 no. And that's what I said. I ain't a fucking actor. No, God. 
But, God. you know, and that's what the thing is, is like anything that you see that's reality TV is not fucking reality, you know? Yeah. It's, they all, and I get it. They Wait till you work in reality TV once in a while. Like, I, I mean, the shit I, I mean, I didn't work a ton of it, but like I, I did a little bit here and there. And um, yeah, that is not really oh, my, no, world. It's horrible, <laughs> yeah. my world, man. I am not down with that. Like, uh, just, just some of it. Like, as a documentary, maker that's going to be such an affront to oh. your sensibilities as like a storyteller it's like there's only one way to and it is too there's very few ways to edit those shows like it's there's those sh- i mean I, I i find myself watching those shows when i'm traveling on the road in a hotel room and like i put on the tv right because that's all that's on yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah. i watch them and i every time it affirms to me like what the fuck is yeah. this and like i just but i find myself binge watching them <laughs> because they they're like a drug man they, they yeah, keep yeah. you going but the thing is it's like you can tell this manufactured drama because, I mean, the first cue for me is usually hearing sentences like that that are that are cut together, and you can tell that they took different words from different sentences to make that sentence, and, yeah, yet, yeah. and you can't see them on the screen say that, but you see them doing something else that would work to that. It's like, come on, man. Yeah. It's like, and yeah. it's all the same format. It's like, all right, we're gonna cut to a scene, and two people are gonna argue, and then we're gonna cut to an uh, interview with this person later, yeah. and they're gonna talk about it, yeah. and it's like. Yeah. yeah, you know, Whatever. I'm so glad we never did one of those. I'm still man, because you know, when, when 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 you guys would do those DVDs, the thing I liked about it, it was very, you know, it wasn't very, about us. It was about the scene and the. Well, no, it was about crazy. just doing the most stupid, dangerous shit I've ever seen anyone do. Like I, I oh yeah, well the that, shit that you guys did. Our segments even, are stupid. Yeah, stupid. <laughs> I don't even know if stupid is the right. I, that's the right way to describe it. Is like more like I, I, I the. Sh- there was I, all the shit that didn't go on film is the shit that was like, holy shit. You guys. Yeah, yeah. Like, Dude, I, there's still, and I know we talked about this. There is a missing DVR tape or whatever they are. There's a missing tape that I cannot find that has some of the funniest, dumbest yeah, you shit. You told me that. Yeah. Like when we stole the gurney out of the, out of oh, the, out of the, um, I wasn't there for that. And we stole a, we stole a, a, a gurney out of the back of a, um, out of the back of an ambulance yep. at some event. Or somebody and we died hooked it up that. to the somebody died that night because there was no yeah. gurney in there. <laughs> and we hooked it up and we were taking it over jumps on choppers. There was all kinds of crazy shit. But s- there was so much footage that were, I remember it was such a fun time. And I, 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 the fireworks taped to that dude's helmet. That oh, the, 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 that's, yeah. I, I, I still to this day can't believe that dude didn't blow up. I mean, he had like, he had like real like rockets. Like, <laughs> oh, no, we do. There they was, were not bottle rockets. They it was were like all rockets. of us. We had the, we had mortars taped to yeah. our helmets, and we were riding around and, yeah. and play and jousting with it. And shit, I don't, I don't, I don't remember. There's so much shit that there's a lot of shit. As much dumb shit as there are on those things on yeah. those DVDs, there was a lot of shit that was a lot of great not stuff filmed. Too. And there was a yeah, there was a lot of shit that was filmed, and we said, nah, don't throw that in. And there was a lot of shit that wasn't even filmed <laughs> that was like, <laughs> <laughs> thank fucking god. And and it's funny uh, because you know we're older now, and you know into different things, and like you know like I'm pretty active in stuff around here, and I always get people like, man, you should run for something locally. And I'm like, no, this this I can give you four good reasons why yeah. I, I am not ever gonna run for anything. Chop no. head one, chop head two, yeah, chop yeah. head three, and chop head four. Yeah. Like I would be totally decimated in the co- the court of public opinion yeah. if any of that shit came yeah. out, you know. But you know, I put my money into people I believe in and, and act silently behind the scenes, you know. Yeah. Um, but dude, man, what what else? What else is going on? Um, that's, that's not a a ton other than that i mean i'm uh uh you know uh, uh, like i said i'm developing a couple you know new things um that i'm pretty excited about uh but other than that you know i've been spending a lot of time uh watching a lot of documentary series um listening to a lot of like i said earlier like a lot of audio documentary um you know series and um i haven't been reading as much as i want to i've been spending a lot of time with my kids uh, yeah and my wife. Um, I mean, we're all kind of, you know, we venture out, you know, quite often. I don't like, you know, I don't lock them in my house. I'm like that. I don't want to make everybody, you make everybody think I'm like, some, yeah. like they all go out, but like, but like uh, you know, we keep, you know. Pretty, well, yeah, there's plenty of outdoor places. I'm, I'm not traveling. In any way. Yeah. No, I'm not going yeah. traveling anywhere. I'm yeah. not going, I'm not going in to go to a restaurant. I'm not really interested in that. Like, yeah. Um, but, you know, I can tell you one of the th- things that we have been doing a lot is, is spending a lot more time cooking and a lot more things, learning how to do things that we never know how to do before. That's just pretty cool. Like I bought a fucking ice cream maker, right? And I was, uh, I, I, I went out back in, I want to say like. Making kale ice cream? 
No, better. <laughs> yeah, I went out to, uh, you know, uh, FOMU, an yeah, ice cream place in Austin? No. It's all vegan ice cream, right? Okay. And uh, maybe with coconut. They made a fucking recipe book and put it right on the freaking counter of all their recipes and how to make them. It's the weirdest shit. So I bought it. I bought an ice cream maker and we've been making ice cream. Like, it's exact. Yeah. Exact. So, But it's like coconut-based ice cream? Oh, man. Yeah, it's so good. I've been doing that and, and um, you know, like I said, watching a lot of, you know, audio documentaries, eating ice cream and, yeah. uh, you know, staying around the house. I'm working on my house a lot. Um, I, uh, I've spent a lot of time this summer uh, doing my deck uh, with my my good friend of mine. And uh, right, like yesterday, I spent the day, you know, tearing all the paint off the backside of my house. And uh, yeah, man. I, I think it's been a good kind of reset for a lot of people like it's it's hard for me to to fully identify it because like i've pretty much worked almost every single day yeah through the whole thing but i know a lot of people who just couldn't you know from yeah. because of the nature of their work you know yeah. and like and i it seems like for a lot of those people if you did productive shit like like people that did productive shit like did real productive shit like and got into like you know like new shit like yep. um i know that was the most uneloquent way of saying anything ever uh but but you know but <laughs> it's the watermelon steel it's reserves wa- you well, steel, steel reserve is dumbing me down oh, God. Um, but um but but you know what i mean like people that chose to be productive whether it was like doing stuff around the house or learning new things like got a lot of stuff done and 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 it was it was like a good reset time, um, and uh, oh. really, yeah. I always oh, just let him go by. We'll yeah, just, just let him we'll go. Just cut it out later. But um, but yeah, man. But there was you know there was a a lot of good could be had from from this like and having that. Yeah, buddy. Um, I just wait. You can just just pause it. So. <laughs> oh no, we just let it roll, dude, just to mm. see the idiocy of what happens around you. Unbelievable. Here. Uh, but yeah, man, like, you know, I, I think it, it, it was good for a lot of people because people got more uh, reconnected with family or or got to spend a lot of time with their kids or, you know, yeah. and, and, and got to, you know, do more things. And, you know, I get a little jealous of it, but I also don't because then there's also people that just went fucking crazy because they weren't doing nothing. Well, I think there's, there's, crazy there's two types of, you know, people that are, are going through. Was, there's many different types of people. Yeah, like, of course, like yeah. The, You know, the biggest one, I think, is people that have kids and people that don't. Um, people that are already, you know, potentially, you know, you know, have sickness that they have to worry about. And there's people that have nothing and may be fine or may not. Yeah. You know, but um, that being said, you know, I'm taking it pretty seriously. Um, and because you just don't know. Yeah. You know, but the, the cool thing, you know, that, that I've been allowed to do now is just like we said, is like spend more time, I guess, just slowing down. Yeah. Um, I think I, I talked about earlier is that, you know, I just, I don't stop moving. It's something that even my mother said as a kid to slow down, like, you know, calm down, slow down. I, 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 it's, I get hyped. Like it's almost like a, a, a adrenaline boost of like when I get pumped on something, like no drugs or nothing needed. I'm just like, I, you know, excited about a project or an idea I have. And, um, you know, you get, you get hyped on it. And with, you know, all these things that have happened in the past six months with our world, it's, it's forced, it's forced yeah. all of us to slow down. And it's weird because I'm one of those people on vacation that I, I can't turn it off. I try, I try like hell to turn it off. And I don't mean my phone. I just mean everything in your head, my head. I try like hell to turn it off. It's probably the biggest thing. Like my, my daughter right now is the biggest thing. She says, says to me, it's like, dad, is this, uh, phone time or is this watch a movie with your daughter time? Like, I'm like, whoa. <laughs> it's like, cool. It's funny when your kid put you in yeah, check. Yeah, man. She's seven. And it's like, you know, whoa. I was <laughs> like, honey, I was just, she's like, I'm like, I'm like, Jesus. Okay. Um, but it's, it's forced me to really slow down and, you know, almost kind of in a weird way, I am being on a schedule, but I don't know how these fucking days go so fucking fast. It's, I, I, I feel like this has been like, a few months, man. I don't feel like this has been as long as it is. I, I can't. This isn't. I'm not one of those people that's just like this is. I'm going crazy. I'm not. Like I'm just. I would like it to be over, um, yeah, just sure. like everybody else. But I have. I, I. 
I don't know. I'm, I feel like I'm on a, on a different time zone than most people who I'm working with or, or being around. I, I, it's, um, this whole thing has made me like slow down so much that, that I think that, um, it's allowed me to maybe, you know, think about more things about, you know, myself, you know, or like, you know, how to, how to make things better or focus on some things, you know, my immediate life, you know, I think unfortunately it's sometimes it's, it's events like these that make people, you know, take that time. Well, it's, it's definitely, well, I don't know. Um, it's definitely, for lack of a better word, like an odd occurrence. And I don't think in our lifetime, again, will we ever have a period of time like this where you're almost forced to, to do that? Like, Well, I'm going to make sure I do. Like, I, I'm going to force myself to, no matter what. Well, I mean, you know, and, and you can do it yourself, but I mean, the world, like, yeah. like the country, like, has yeah. been put on a fucking standstill. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, it's first time I've ever, you know, obviously seen anything. I don't, I can't imagine us ever having, like, another six-month shutdown again. Yeah. Unless that's just the new normal, you know, now that, like, anytime there's a... Free town, baby. Wow. <laughs> Free town. Um... You know, and Jeez, the, there's a lot of bikes down here. Man. Speed limit in front of the shop is like 30 or 40 miles an hour too. Like yeah. and no one's been going that has been speeding oh, by. Yeah. No, 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 but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not being a cop. I, I could give a shit less. I'm just saying. Just, I love it. You have to state that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Of course. Yeah. No, but I mean, I don't want to be like, well, you know, the speed limit is 30 miles an hour in front of my shop. It's like, no, I don't give a fuck. Speed by. I don't give a fuck. But I'm just pointing it out to the, to the listeners that might not know. You, you go know, out there and, and stomp your feet. Oh, I don't know. By. I don't give a shit. I'll fucking egg them on I'll fucking whatever uh, throw oil on the ground make it more interesting for you <laughs> I'm just kidding um, but yeah no 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 I wasn't being a crotchety person about uh, sp- sp- with speed enforcement I was just I was just giving you know just so people know that um, but you know but yeah man I don't think we're ever going to see a, a, a thing like this again you know like where th- there's this much time that people have to take advantage of to kind of refocus and reevaluate things and be able to work on stuff that you normally wouldn't because you don't have time in your in in regular daily life. So, um, I coming out of it, it's, it, things might be way cooler. I, who knows? You know, I I I don't know. I, 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 don't know. I you know, I'm not always, I'm not the usual half full glass guy. You know what I mean? But I so that's the only way I can keep saying about it is like to hope that. Um, we come out of this shit and, and, and are better for it. For the first time in my life, I'm having a really hard time turning on the news. Oh, no, no, no. The mainstream news is such fucking bullshit, dude. Yeah, no, you man, can't man. watch it, you know? I'm just having a really hard time and these it, days, yeah. On, uh, in the whole spectrum of it, too, yeah. like, you know, like the, the left or the right side of uh, news, like, because we know that they're all partisan now. Um, it, it's fucking bullshit. But you know what? CDC released its, you know, and this is why the news is fucking bullshit. CDC released statistics earlier this week showing how much it's gone down. Mm-hmm. You know, no news outlets are running that. That doesn't scare anybody. That doesn't instill fear in motherfuckers. So they're not going to fucking run that. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, you got to pay attention to pot where you are more than like as a country as a whole. In a yeah. Lot of ways. Yeah. 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 It's, that's the only way I think it's going to get, you know, really taken care of uh, yeah. is, is, is that kind of attention to detail versus a, a whole country in itself. Yeah. I think it needs to be looked at in certain areas, uh, sure, sure. but I'm not a doctor and yeah. I'm not going to about to try to say, I know what I'm talking about, but, um, anyways, yeah, I don't even want to talk. Yeah. About yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, yeah, yeah. So fucking, uh, you got anything, uh, I know, like, I know you've been very involved in music and yeah. then, you know, like, and then also involved in music through film and whatnot. You got anything going on musically or any plans uh, for, for, uh, for music related? Uh, I have some things I'm working on. Um, yeah, I'm working on a couple things. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing you can talk about yet? Yeah, nothing. I have some, some things that kind of, you know, I'm doing um, uh, here and there. But um, things that, you know, it's one of those things where like, you know, when you, when you pick up, you know, a guitar when you're a kid, at least for me, you never really kind of stop. You have like times you put it down for a while, um, you know, or, or you stop playing when you play in a band. And that's what I was kind of Yeah, there's so many other factors to it. Um, I mean, 
there's different levels of, of factors, you know, coming to play with the level of band you're at, you know? And, um, but yeah, as far as music wise, um, I'm, I have some things I'm working on with some people, um, pretty excited about, but other than that, it's the same old man. All right. Well, you got the exclusive here. He's working on some things with some people. <laughs> <laughs> I have a couple of friends. On yeah, I'm just playing. Yeah, you know. Yeah. yeah. I just don't have a lot of. Uh, I have. I have. I don't have a ton of time. Well, I mean, it's, that sounds like a match of contradiction. It's just one of those things where I'm. I'm so focused right now on these other things. Yeah. No. Absolutely. On. No. I get it. But but um, I'll never stop playing, man. I love playing music. I love playing bass. I love playing bass. Um, it's funny. It's like uh, yesterday I was uh, had to move some stuff and pull out some some old records I needed, and um, I actually found a whole negative sheet of a show we did in I want to say it was like ninety. I want to say it was ninety nine or two thousand one. I it was one of it was ninety nine or two thousand one. I can't remember which one it was, which tour. But it's interesting to look back on those photos and. I mean, I'm 42 now. I joined yeah. the band. I joined Blood for Blood when I was, uh, this was 97 when I joined. So I would have been two years out of high school. I was just a kid. <laughs> I was just yeah, a yeah. fucking kid, man. But um, yeah, I don't know. I, it was just interesting to find those photos because when you, when it, it, I'm a very photographic person. I remember a lot. I see a lot in my head and I didn't remember I didn't even think of these, that show, or these yeah, photos yeah. until I saw it. So it was I, like discovering a little time capsule. Yeah, man. And the thing is, it was cool too, is because I looked at them, it was like, it was photos that my brother took. And my brother's a photographer. He's an awesome photographer. And then I remember that whole night. And then I remember everything that came along with it. And I remember everything with my brother. And then the, the, the days, you know, transpiring after it and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, it was, it, was, uh, it was interesting to just look back on, um, on that just for a couple minutes. You know what I mean? I miss it like fucking crazy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. It's weird. Like, you know, and I'm, I'm a few years older than you and it's like, I don't need to be doing any bands, but I fucking feel compelled to. Yeah. I don't want to. I, yeah. I really, and it sounds like a dicky thing. I'm not saying it in a dicky way. I really don't want to add anything else to my life. Yeah. But you got to, some things you just got to do. Like, you know, are I mean? you playing, are you, are you guys doing anything right now? No, I mean, with this. I mean, you've been recording anything. Well, we're supposed to be doing a split seven inch with uh, Apocalypse Tribe, which oh, okay. is a uh, which is a uh, Corey and uh, um, uh, Carl from uh, Earth Crisis. His, oh wow, his, his other band. Mm -hmm. They're kind of along the same same thought lines of oh. of things in the world. Mm -hmm. um, and we got to record. We're gonna uh, record to do some stuff with uh, Warren uh, Pitchfork. Does uh, split seven inches, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, we're gonna go back and do something that's some point it's just uh with all the shutdown stuff kind of threw a wrench in the works but um you know then but the year prior you know af was out for like 250 or 260 dates so there, there wasn't much we could do then um yeah but uh but yeah man yeah we're gonna get back into it sooner or later and then uh trevor from the studio is like he's out working on fishing boats now so it's oh, it's wow. hard to schedule um it's hard to schedule studio when time. When it comes into port? Yeah, because we don't know, you yeah, know you what I mean? Yeah, portable studio yeah, port. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you guys can be like a squashbuckle or whatever. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> squashbuckle. You can do your pirate yeah. pirate album. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, so so there, there's really, um, so there's just a couple of things at play, but we're gonna, we'll get back into it soon. It's like you said, there's some things going on with some guys and doing some stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I, you know what? But not for nothing. I was thinking about it because we're coming up on that anniversary. I think it was ten years ago. Yeah, that we went out. You know, like you, blood for blood, and you. Uh, I went out with you guys to to yep. Europe. That was yep. a fucking. Yeah. I know a lot of crazy shit happened on that tour. Yeah. Um. You know, like um. You know, like uh. You know, but outside of the crazy stuff, yeah. um. There's a lot of good times on that fucking tour, dude. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was an interesting time to say the least. Yeah, dude. Um, but because now, like, I see some shit coming up in like Facebook memories and whatnot because it, it pulls it up, and I'm like, damn, dude, that was already fucking that long ago. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was 2010, I believe. Yeah, I believe it was 2010, or maybe it was 2011. Actually. I, I think it was 2011. 2011. It was. It was 2011. And but then, for some reason, stuff's already coming up. You know, it's weird. I was sticking the other day the fucking foghorn, the, the air horn. The, yeah. The, 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 
I can't believe you have that. (laughs) Fucking. (laughs) For for those that don't know, I was the official air horn uh, player for for air hornist for for, for Blood for Blood. I had this idea, and it was a joke. I think it was some late night, drunken, stupid conversation. I said, I'm going to buy a fucking case of air horns. I'm going to use them at the show. And they were like, what? What do you you mean? I said, I want truth to just sit here and fucking... (laughs) Yeah. Knock them off. Then during sick of it all, I remember I I busted one in the microphone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. Oh, there was, so, I mean, and it, it it there were so many because a lot of those shows, well, not a lot of them, I, like at least half of those shows were festival shows. Yeah. So there were so many bands <sighs> that like and we had a bus too. Yeah, we had a nice bus. We had Wu Tang's bus. Yeah, I was gonna say it was like the last people was yeah, Wu Tang. You know, yeah. That it was that was Wu Tang bus. They get yeah. that bus every, every time they would yeah. For some reason, that was their bus. Remember how much it smelled like weed? It Yo, was like, you, it reeked of still, weed. Still. There was no getting it out. No, it was like we were laughing about like, wow, it's real. It's, you know? And uh, yeah, there was all kinds of just like sometimes now I'm thinking about there's so much. There was so much. It was it was short. But there was so much oh, was packed nonstop. into that. It was, it was just nonstop. It was not, remember we made, one of the f- funniest things that we did, remember that, is like, remember we made up a birthday for Neil that night. Remember we put, we put flyers all over that town and all these random people were coming to the show. Oh, for a yeah, birthday we, party we for birthday Neil? Party. We put, remember we took, we took a picture of Neil <laughs> and then put, him, put pictures of him. And it was in German, come to Neil's birthday party at this time at the bar. And it was people that showed up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was also the, the I was a very antagonist on that. Yes, yes, you were. Yes, <laughs> that, yes. Was, that was kind of my role. <laughs> yeah, I remember, and, and and that's how the whole American War Machine came out. Yep. Me fucking with you for that whole day. Yep, uh, <laughs> get it going, get it going. Uh, but we'll, we won't. There's a there's there's a lot of stuff we won't divulge the details yeah. of. There just idiocy. Um, but 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 man, do you, do you miss the road at all? Oh my god, I miss it terribly. I miss. I miss more than anything just playing, um, you know, in a, playing music, you yeah. know, in a, in, in, a, in a practice space or uh, in a studio. It's, it's fucking therapeutic, man. I love man. playing shows. I mean, I love playing shows. The touring aspect of it, you know, I, I miss sleeping in a, a bus. I, I always sleep amazing on a bus. I don't, Do it's you? Like, oh, my God, man. It's like, it's like getting rocked to sleep every fucking night. It's like crazy. Huh. Um, I always slept fine on the bus, but, like, I miss, I miss... Um, playing, I miss the, you know, the, the, the people you, you know, you, every couple months you see them. It's a cycle, you know, you see friends and you know, after doing it years and years, you become close with a, with a lot of people. Like, yeah, um, man. you know, like my friend Gene. Yeah. You know, he's awesome. He, 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 remember I said like a couple of days before we left for tour, he was talking. I said, why don't you just come with us for a couple of weeks? And then Heather came. I said, "Why don't you come too? We we'll just all go. Like you know, yeah, yeah. we we'll just bring a bunch of friends on the road." Yeah, and, I, uh, I still hear from him every now and then too. Gene, yeah. he's a good dude. Yeah. He's from Belgium, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. I, I he's st- killing it in the tattoo game out there. He now. is. He's really good. I stay in contact with him quite often, and uh, he, I consider him a very close friend of mine. Um, but um, you know, it, I missed. I missed it. I miss you know every aspect of it. You know, um, there's there's parts that I don't. That's sure as hell. Like being sure. gone for you know months on end. Yeah. You know, I don't. I don't miss that. Um, because one of the things that I I hated about touring the most was you have like twenty three hours out of the day you got to fill up and figure out what to do. Yeah. And then you get one hour to do something cool. Yeah. And it's the constant balance. Is it worth it? Yeah, but the problem is too is that a good bulk of those other twenty three hours are spent on a bus that's moving, so you only have limited range of opportunity of what you can do. Yeah, I know, <laughs> and that's what leads to bad things. Yeah. Like, you know, so, yeah, like, yeah. is killing that time. Um, and uh, we filled it up pretty good over the years. I can tell you that. Oh, I can imagine many yeah. things, but um, yeah, I, I miss that. Uh, the obvious, you know, who who if you play in a band, you have an audience, you do really well, you have great friends and people you meet all over the world and then it gets you know uh taken from you yeah like it's not it's not the best case scenario you know um but i i'm i miss it yes very much yeah yeah no i, I hear you dude man. not to sound it's on a, on a like a somber so, note, no you know, no but no. like you know it's like it's one of those things where like you know with 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 the band i mean we've had this conversation before many times i i i you know love that band very much you know as much as all the guys um, but it's just, you know, it is what it is. And, uh, yeah. we will, we will, uh, yeah. You've done so much shit with, uh, with, with, uh, filming and, uh, you know, 
you know, either as editing or kind of spearheading the whole project, directing, what's kind of been your favorite thing to work on? You know, it's, it's funny. My favorite thing to work on is, um, well, it's, that's kind of a loaded question. I know, I know. Yeah, but, yeah. but I can say this. Like, things I enjoy, there's different aspects I love. One of the things I like the most is actually the research and development of something. Yeah. I, I really love that because it's, um, it's, a, it's a lot of uh, physical work to it. Um, it's testing things, checking things out, learning new things, talking to people, um, you know, uh, connecting, connecting dots, uh, finding that corner piece in the corner of the jigsaw puzzle and going, oh, and this goes to this, and then, oh, to this, to this, that, and just constantly doing that. Um, I love that aspect of it. Um, I like making it. Um, and then I really love post-production. I always have. I started my career as an editor. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I still always love it. Um, I still do it commercially. Um, I try whenever I can to edit my own projects. Um, I just did a really big project for a Sony um, last year and then they brought me back in to, to, uh, to oversee the edit as a director. Um, and, uh, I love just being in post-production period, but did you, what I like doing the most or the, the project I like the most? Either or both. Well, yeah. I guess like my, my, the th- but, but what about the editing? Is it that, and before we talk about a specific project, what about the editing? Well, it's, it's like, it's like working with your hands. Like same thing as a bike. It's kind of like the same type of thing. You're taking things that are already made or, or, and you're piecing them together Yeah. and you're making it better. You're yeah. putting on the polish. Sure. You're, putting, you're, you're, you're tightening things up. You're like making things sound right and move right and be safe and be right. The same thing with editing. You're yeah. taking all these assets and all these layers and you put them all together to create something that did not exist before. Yeah. I always say it's really interesting is like, I'm constantly working on something now that was in, in, you know, in the past for the future. It's like, I can never figure out yeah, where yeah, I'm going to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, so we shot this thing like six months ago and I remember where I was shooting this and what I was doing and that whole experience. And, Oh, why did I shoot it with this lens? Fuck. Like, you know, like those type of things. And then now, Oh, I'm fixing it right now. And it's not going to be due until November. It's yeah. like, and then, then that's when people see it and then people see it and then it's, it's over. I like, I like the whole, um, uh, you know, not so much the process of everything. I like certain aspects and then jumping around from them. Yeah. Um, I just find oh, for someone that's a good editor, that is just amazing to me because that's such an overwhelming fucking thing. Like it can be, it because can be. I mean, I don't know. Like I go into like my little experience with editing is like, there's a million ways all of, each one of these th- way things could be done. Yeah. Like you could take this and this, and then you well, can put this filter on it, or you can slow this down, or you well, can do this, or you can cut it here or cut it there. And fucking, that's the whole beauty of it is being oh. able to, to have that freedom to do it. And you figure out what type of things you do well and how you're going to work with them yeah, and how you're going to make them your own and use your own sensibilities to make them. Sure. And that's, that's exciting um, yeah. to me. I love being able, I love editing music videos. I've edited a ton of music videos and yeah. because it's the best of both worlds. I'm playing music that I like. Yeah. Because I did the project because I like the band. Yeah. So I'm doing work like that way. And then I'm cutting together visuals of things that to tell this story or yeah. or just make something that just looks cool, you know, yeah. or is different. Um the, the filmmaking is it's weird. Filmmaking isn't isn't only a for me, it's not a career, but it is a career. It's it's more of a it's a lifestyle. It's yeah. like it's kinda like punk rock hardcore music or being, you know, a, a, a biker, you know, or, or, or just having, it's like you filmmaking kind of allows me, it doesn't allow me, it dictates what else I'm going to do in my life. Minus my family. Sure. You know, but even there sometimes too, to be honest with you, between all of us, but we make the decision together, you know, um, having two kids and, and, you know, a wife and then, you know, traveling the world, you know, promoting a film or, or playing in a band is, it's it's not always ideal. Sure, of course. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but you know, making those, making the projects that I like making and doing the aspects that I like doing them, um, doing with them is is important. And I then I tend to focus on those those parts and and um, really kind of like hone in on it. it. Allows you to really kind of like with making a film. There's so much to do, so many things you can do. It's it's overwhelming. Yeah. You talk about editing being overwhelming. 
just on Godfathers. No, I'm not going to like two million horn. No, 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 no. But I directed that. I yeah. produced that. I co-wrote that. I edited that. I did all of the clearance work for it. The only thing I, and I did a bunch of the legal stuff with my attorney. The only thing I didn't do was sell it. Yeah. Had somebody else sell it. No, no. But that's why I was asking, what do you like to do? Because you, you, there's not a lot of filmmakers that are involved all the way. No, that's not true. Well, a, most know. filmmakers are, to be honest with you, because yeah. mo, like at least like the, the ones that even. Well, maybe in the documentary, but I'm, I'm thinking like feature film stuff. Like, you'd be surprised, man. Really? Like, oh yeah. man. Yeah. Like, I mean, there's. Like there's, I used to work with this director. I used to shoot a, a kid show for PBS. Yeah, I remember. Maybe years ago. I was just before I started. I met you actually years and years ago. Um, you know that director names Dorothy Dickey. She was just she knew what the hell she was doing. She I learned so much by watching her. The thing is, she just focused on directing, but she also produced. And then she micromanaged everything because she's a control freak. Yeah. You know, just like me. So it's filmmaking is a great place for people that like to control things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, but then there's filmmakers that, you know, I know that literally won't do anything else other than just like do one thing, like direct. Yeah, yeah. Or, or like my brother-in-law, Dean, um, he's in the camera union in Boston. It's a union job. He's in there. He does it very, very fucking well. Like all those guys are there precision guys like they know what they're doing and that's their craft and they become very good at that one trade sure uh, it's what makes big movies so efficiently you know and that's our industry so efficient because you have those guys that are women men whatever it may be that are just focused on their craft their their trade and um and uh you know that's why this it's a great place for people that obsess about one thing to uh, as well yeah. yeah exactly you can do either yeah yeah but yeah, you know, because like I've always liked to go out and shoot and be on the ground and be there and do some of the shooting and stuff. But like the editing is just to me is overwhelming. So when when you do do it all, that's why I was like, what what kind of piece of the pr puzzle do you like the best? You know what I mean? The the, the, the editing aspect of it, it's like, uh, it's funny because for me, it I I'll, I really really lock in. Like yeah yeah like sure. When I even when I do my commercial stuff, I lock out hours and say this is what I'm doing like and I, I I make sure I do a lot of work for um a couple big you know brands um directly and um it's you know it's working in the you know bigger commercial world and doing you know bigger commercial work like that I mean it's a business it's a you know it's it's just like doing any kind of like you know trade your hour you charge per day or, or per hour or when you're lucky enough to have a studio like i do like you know you do that i don't have the studio anymore but when i did um you know you can you can do things like that what um having gone through like godfathers in the whole process of you know the pre-production production post-production post um you know like you said everything except selling the film but but in a way you kind of you didn't you went on the whole kind of tour circuit for, for the film festivals and stuff. Like, would you do that, all of that again, or having gone through all that, are there now things that you might like kind of parse out to, to no, I do it again. You absolutely. Do it again. I, absolutely. Yeah. I do it again. And I, and, but I would, um, but I wouldn't do it all by myself. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to enjoy it a little more. Sure. I'd like to be able to, to kick back a little bit and like, just kind of take it in a little bit because I, I couldn't. Yeah. I was just, just head down, go, 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 go. Like there was times where I would, you know, fly to, to, to Florida and then like, you know, be there for four days and then I'd fly to London and then like, then I'd, you know, fly to fucking Arizona again. Like I was gone like off and it was like mini tours, you know? Yeah. Um, but it was, but yeah, no, I would do it again. Like I just wouldn't do it everything my fucking self again. Okay. No, no. That, and that's what I was asking. Yeah. Is there anything that you would like kind of next time around more like relegate to others or, you know, like. Or would you want to do like, you know, when you say that you don't, you'd want others to help you, like where would you want the help? Like, oh, I mean, you know? I mean, the thing is like, you know, I, I mean, the stuff I do now, I mean, I do, I do commercial work where I'm able to just focus on one thing. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I, I say I'd like to focus on just directing, but I have this rule. <laughs> I have this weird rule. What Enra I work with, all the DPs that I work with know this. They're all cool with it. That's why one of the reasons I work with them. I am not a DP. I never thought I, I never say I am. I'm not that type of guy. But I can shoot pretty good. And there's certain times I just want to shoot or I feel that I can get a better 
interaction with a subject if I shoot it. And so the rule is whenever I shoot somebody, I have the, the deal is I get to take the camera if I want to shoot something and you can't be all sour about it. Yeah. Because DPs yeah. get territorial. Or just sure. Anybody. Because like, then I just, but I make it a thing where I like, hey, look, I'm not like going to take it from you. Like, you're not getting it right. You're not doing it right. It's not like to embarrass. It's more of just, I need to do it. You have a vision. Yeah. And, 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 and you need to see that. Through. Yeah. And, but part of becoming a better filmmaker is being able to describe or tell people what to do. But sometimes it just, you just have to feel it and do it, work it out as you go. Yeah. Um, and plus, it just sometimes I'll prove to myself, yo, nope. He's doing it way better than it could ever be done. Or, yeah. You know? Um, but, yeah. I mean, that's... I don't necessarily, like... I'm not, like, one of those people that's, like, a, um, a like control freak bully on set or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. But um, I do like to have that one rule. Yeah. But, you know, and it, for you, it's, like, it's all about the end product anyway. It's not, like... You're not doing it because you're a bully by nature. It's no. just you're so obsessed and involved in the project that yeah. you're you're just kind of you're running you know plus it's my ass running. too like yeah it's, yeah it's, yeah, it's yeah, my yeah, ass. yeah so it's yeah. like it's like you know i always need to say like come here slack man you know like yeah it's not that i don't trust you i've had i've had very few issues like that but there's been once in a while a little rumble with somebody and i had to have a little you know talk a you know pow -wow with them. yeah it's not like a sit down but like a, yeah. you know just like you know hey man you don't need nothing by it but sure yeah this is just the way i were all yeah 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 and I'm sure it, it's not you, man. It's me. But but I'm sure in in the the whole entertainment world, there's so many like weird personalities that like people are kind of probably used to stuff like that. Yeah, otherwise. I mean, yeah. Sometimes there's there's some just like in any. I think there's there's different there's different types of people in every yeah. genre. But uh, but you know, music and film tend to bring a lot of eccentric artist type people and sometimes motion unstable. Yeah, <laughs> sure, know? sure. So. Um, but also like just great people, you know, I know you did, you've done a lot of, um, live, um, like the, I, you know, I, whatever you call it. I don't know, like the live DVDs or live series yeah, for I've bands. Done a, yeah. You've done a bunch, bunch like Meshuggah yeah. and different yeah. bands like that. Yeah. Is that something you like doing? You get another one of those with you or are you kind of done with well, it? Well, um, well, I don't think we're going to bring out any concerts and, you know. Yeah, that's what I, well, <laughs> yeah. that's true. No, no, but, but now more than ever, there might be a need to do that type of stuff. Like it's we funny, just, I just, uh, I just got asked. Tara did last yeah. night, the live at the uh, Bowery. I just Electric. got asked to actually do, um, something for streaming. Yeah. Know, a group. That's, I mean. If it was, if it was, it's not really my thing, but I could yeah. learn, you know, but Behemoth just did one this week. I think it was this weekend. And holy fucking shit. Like, really? Yeah. It's, I, I mean, they went, Metallica did one the other day. Ashir Terror did one last night. Um, I mean, bands have been doing them left and right. Clutch yeah. did one. But the ones that are doing ones that are really fucking cool. Yeah. Like behemoth. Yeah. Like, holy shit. Well, I was saying on this podcast not too long ago, I went to go see At The Gates, and they opened for behemoth, but I, I was never a big behemoth guy. After seeing their fucking production, <laughs> I was like, holy shit, I had a whole new appreciation and for And their them. music videos are so fucking fucked up. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. And they're just gorgeous. They're just yeah. thought out and... and yeah, that's a the, the guy Nurgle. Uh, I think it's Nurgle. Uh, yeah, he's one hell of a mastermind. Visionary. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a guy's something else. But that that um, they I don't know if I would ever do something like that. I've been asked to do that, but if I did it, I have some ideas on how I would do it. I would yeah. do it like in the sense of like like a behemoth thing, where it's a whole set and production and like yeah, it's an experience. It's yeah. like a thing. Yeah, yeah, it's, exactly. But also nothing against sheer terror, like in bands doing it that way too. It fits that way too. It's also like a, a, a production of money thing and stuff like that. It's not cheap to do production like that. No. Well, like, you know, we watched some of the sheer terror one yesterday. How did it sound? Good. The sound was fucking great. Yeah. And I the, think the and, it was Bowery Electric, right? Yeah. That and place the place is great. And the video was great. Like yep. the, the quality of the video. Yep. And it was like a four or five camera production, That's you awesome. know, it kept bouncing around to so the different shots. It's going to be the thing now, man. It's going to, you're going to see a lot of that, I think. Yeah. I think, Cause like, you know, what else can a band do besides play at a drive-in theater or something? Some shit? bands are doing it, saying it's live and then cutting it together later. Yeah. yeah, but some are not. No, you could tell the shit terror one was like absolutely live. Yeah, you know what I mean? That's like, cool. You know, and uh, the only thing that was kind of missing was like, you know, Paul had his banter, but he didn't have anyone in particular to pick out in the crowd to kind of banter on. You <laughs> oh, know what no. I mean? You know, I because think you, about that. Yeah, you know, that's part of the whole shit terror experience, oh, right? No. <laughs> what was he? Was he picking on the crew, the film crew? <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, no, no. He was just picking on some general stuff, you know what I mean? But he didn't, you know, like just kind of state of the world stuff and yeah, whatever. Yeah. But he didn't, uh, he didn't, uh, I didn't even think about it because he's so engaging with yeah, the audience. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't, he, yeah, he couldn't like look at someone and, you know, I wonder if he thought about that shit. before he did it. Like, uh, how, that would be interesting to ask him that. Yeah, no, I know, I know, I know. I, I got to get him on here sooner or later. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, no, it's just it's just interesting times, man. It's it's weird to see. It's weird to think about where things are going, and and uh, like you said, you just got to kind of pivot, fucking yes. adapt, and fucking roll with it, and kind of uh, get in your lane on the new highway, you know? Yeah, and also kind of like I noticed that one of the things that, uh, I, I'd hope, oh, you know, people that are are having a hard time you know, can like reach out to friends and talk like that. Because in the past week, I swear I've talked to more people that are having a really hard time with everything. Just especially people living alone. It's like, Oh yeah. I, I can't even imagine. I, it's, you a, know? it's a, I can, it's a lot, man. Like yeah. for months on end, it's like, but but, I, you know, and the, the thing is with it, there's people that are probably living alone that have even like really left their apartment. Yeah. You know, yeah, or, yeah. or house or whatever, you yeah. know, like, and, and, and you go mad. Yeah, you go fucking bananas. Like, and I'm an antisocial person, but yeah, but you gotta but, get. You gotta, but there's different. There's like, you know, I can't, you know, can't be a shut in. I go uh, fishing all the time. I go yeah. hiking all the time. I went, I went with me and Jay Zuko went, uh, went on uh, first time I, second time doing his uh, paddle boards out on the lake. Oh yeah, it's fucking great. Yeah, like amazing. Like, it's you got to get outside and do stuff like. that. Oh, absolutely. Man. But at the same time, it's like it, it, get that vitamin D too. That'll yeah. make you feel better. You know, B twelve. That too? Yeah. Those two things, big difference. And fucking kale, dude. Kale. <laughs> I'll bring you some. I gave you some last time. No, no. Yeah, it was the time. What time it was, I mean, it, was, it was last summer. It was last summer. It was a long, yeah. It was a while back. It was last summer. I gave you a big bunch. Like, what the what? fuck is this? No, it's no, fucking kale. No, no, no. I'll have to see how far you've progressed. It's superfood. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Fucking kale master. Yeah. E Ian the kale master .com. Yeah. Uh, check it out. Yeah. <laughs> some asshole's going to buy that domain name I so know. you can't have it now. I know. Um, yeah, well, fuck yeah, man. I, 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 you know, it has been too long, and it, it, you know that's one of the good things of this podcast. Shit is, it, it's more of an excuse to to, yeah. to to be able to sit down with friends so, so far. I really, haven't. There's only been one or two where it's been people I haven't. Re no, only one where it's been people. You I mainly known. you mainly talk with people you you, you know your relationship yeah. with. I mean, I think that's what makes what you do and what I told you you should do. I mean, a long time ago, special and cool. It's like just talking to friends and like yeah. doing something cool. Um, yeah. I got some cool ones coming up, but some more people I don't know. I, I can't let the, I don't like to talk about it. Until, right, just drop it. Until it happens to you. Cause you know, you know, shit happens and might not happen. I don't want to yeah. be like, oh, I got this dude coming in. It's going to be funny, you know, and then it doesn't happen, but whatever. Um, but yeah, dude, like fucking, how can people uh, reach out and see some of your body of work and um, find you? Well, I think uh, if anybody hasn't seen the film, The Godfathers of Hardcore, the easiest way is just to go to the Godfathers of Hardcore.com. Um, you can order it there on, um, you know, the, the digital platforms that it's on. It's on Showtime. Uh, it's on Sky Network in the uh, UK. You can watch it on uh, Vimeo On Demand or uh, pretty soon you'll be able to get it on all the platforms. Um, and then you can also get it on uh, Blu-ray um, from uh, Bridge Nine. It's in most stores. It's in Walmart. It's in Best Buy. It's You can get it all major chains or you can order it direct from from them um and then lastly if if you want specialty items you can uh you can get them from the just email the website and um me or one of the other guys will put together like a package but we're selling uh blue uh, dvds yeah as well you but, got any more of the other cool stuff like the skateboards or the prints um, or no anything? i don't have any of that stuff but the prints you can get we we do really um high quality um i think you pronounce it geelik is that it G geelik oh um, Gickley or Gickley, Gisley yeah. or something. Yeah, museum yeah, quality. The museum uh, quality uh, prints. Jake Bannon um, does them over at Death Wish. Death Wish handles all those forms. There's like three different sizes, but they're really high quality posters of the yeah. film. Um, they're not necessarily cheap, but they're super high quality on really nice paper. Yeah, but that's like museum quality. Yeah, right? it's it's they're super high end, and those are the only ones we have to yeah. sell. But pretty soon, uh, before Christmas, I'm going to have a whole bunch of really cool shit that I'm putting together now that's going to be done. Um, that we'll be able to get, but we'll be able to get it all off the website. It's just okay. the Godfather's and then people can find me at Ian McFarland films.com. So, okay. He just, and, uh, but yeah, that's it, man. Thanks for having me. Oh, fuck having yeah, it's good to hang out and yeah. uh, shoot the shit. Absolutely. You know? We got to do it again, but you know, off mic, you know what I mean? And then, yeah. so it's, 
with a well, there'll probably still be six to eight feet in between. Yeah, most likely. Yeah, there'll probably be at least yeah six to eight feet, something like that. But uh, 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 yeah, and when are you? When let me ask you this. Okay. Because. And uh, this isn't a dig at all, but you're the person I know mo- who's taken it the most serious for, for, for this long. Um, and I'm not saying that as a dig, but like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, um, you're, 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 you know, you're just thinking about it the most and taking it the most serious, but like taking the most precautions. Yeah. Um, when are you going to be back to a point where you're comfortable just kind of going back to like regular times. I like, don't even what, what would need to happen for that? Just, I, this is just me asking as a friend, like curio- curiosity. Man, I, I don't know. Yeah. Like I'm it's that's, there's so many layers to this. Yeah. There's no. so many different people and so many different views and so many, it's like, I mean, the obvious it's gone obviously, but you can't not live your life and do it. I mean, I'm not a shut in. Like I, I, no, I, know, I, I yeah, know. I mean like, but, um, but like, what would it take for you to be like comfortable just going back to like regular social, not, you know, not social well, I mean, distances, I'd, but back to like regular, like, I mean, I go, I go, I've gone out many times. I mean, go out to places. I mean, I go into stores and do all that stuff, everything I need to do. But as far as it goes, like going to a, you know, restaurant and a bar and hanging out with friends for the night, you know, yeah. not wearing a mask. No, I'm not going to do that until this thing's gone. Like, yeah, yeah. And, and I, I don't think anybody should, to be honest with you. I think it's, I think most people should at least, you know, try to do that. But that being said, that's a whole nother conversation, which I don't want to get into. Yeah. But like, you know, um, no, no, I don't I, know. I'm just asking you what, like what needs to happen for you to be comfortable to be, again? I mean, I, I think it'd be a little bit further down, like, you know, it, numbers even, wise yeah like that, man because yeah. it's like you know I, it's different when you have kids i i, I sure I, it really is man yeah and, i don't so yeah, i get it and yeah. it's it's really difficult because you know you you're also you're looking at their development you know and they're social creatures you know a huge amount of kids development is like interaction with other kids and they're not having that and that's the part that honestly breaks my heart my wife's heart and i think a lot of parents hearts is sure it's, it's not and some people are more comfortable than others in doing certain things. I mean, we don't, you know, we're just getting ready for us, my son to start playing soccer, you know, and we're talking about that. It's just a lot of talking and a lot of research and looking at things and asking questions. Um, it's just, it's just a lot and it's constant, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's constant. And, uh, I don't, I don't know exactly what a hundred percent, what it would make me feel a hundred percent better. Um, other than just to be gone. Yeah. You know? Um, but are your kids going to school or like, I know it's, it's, that's like one of the weird things, like in Massachusetts, it varies by town. Like, you know, um, it it all, um, it all, we're, we're, there's a lot of factors right now that are being weighed with my town specifically. Yeah. Um, and my wife's a teacher too. So yeah, I know it makes things even, you know, is she going to, yeah, yeah, she's, she's going back. She's already, she's already started teaching again. Um, they had, the kids aren't back yet, but she's been in for two weeks. Yeah. Are they doing like the half on half off? It's going to be a hybrid. Yeah. yeah. It's a hybrid. Um, and I think they're, you know, they're going to do the best they can. Um, but at the same time, I know the numbers and when they hit a certain amount per th- hundred thousand people, um, they go to full remote and I mean, they just keep climbing and it's like the it, they're on the cusp. I, I don't even, I'm not even convinced the kids will actually go back in our area to be yeah. honest with you fully because it's on the cusp of what they're except the state is calling. Okay. Or not. Yeah. So my only problem gets into like with the numbers, there's so much funniness with it all. So yeah. you will never know. Like you said, really I take, is. we, I take multiple sources and yeah. try to figure out from this one, this one, and then we just kind of look at them all and make like, what makes sense. Like, yeah, I think that's the only way you can do it. Yeah, man. You know, I mean, but I, I, it's, it's, it's hard for everybody and everybody has their own situation. I don't want to say, oh, only people that have kids are the ones that have problems. That's not the case at all. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm well, saying is, is that it's, it's hard for everybody in different situations. And, um, you know, maybe, maybe only people need to slow down a little bit and not judge and say, well, maybe I don't know the full picture of what's going on with that family or those people. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, because there's too much judging going on right now. Yeah. There's a lot of craziness with that yeah. shit going on. Like, yeah. and, and, and I, I, my focus has always been like, 
You know that little what the fuck is there's that? Like, there's like a bird or an owl it's or some a, weird it's shit, like, dude. It's like a there's something a little animal or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, it keeps screeching. <laughs> it's fucking hey, welcome to Freetown, dude. It's probably it's probably a puck wedgie, man. Um, <laughs> but yeah, dude, like you know, my my whole course is just like I just like to stay on the front lines of reminding people like we 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 agree. Of course, you have to agree to do things for the betterment of, you know, your community and your neighbors. But you also have to make sure that you keep government officials in check and not let them get too fucking crazy with shit. Because once the government takes or infringes upon a right, like very rarely do they roll it back. Mm-hmm. And things get rolled out incrementally. And yeah. I'm just seeing a lot of weird things that look like they're getting rolled out incrementally. And I'm not coming from any weird paranoid right. or conspiracy I know you're background. Not conspiracy theory dude. And I it's know. just, you know, just seeing things. And I'm like, dude, what the fuck? Like, and I'm like, I'm like, hope these motherfuckers know that, you know, we're just agreeing to this temporarily. You know what I mean? And, and lest these motherfuckers forget they're, they're not our rulers, they're our representatives, you know? And it's just like, that's the shit that scares me. And then what really is scaring me is more thinking about the economic ramifications of all this that we haven't even yet begun to scratch yeah. the surface of, yeah, man. That scares the fuck out of me, to be honest. And uh, I don't know. I think that's, yeah, I think that's a very valid valid thing to be worried about. Yeah, in a dude. Lot of ways. Yeah, so. yeah. But, you know, day by day. Day by day, yeah, absolutely, it's, brother. It's the way it is. Just like you, you, I have, I I have to live by this mantra these days. Yeah. Is for many reasons, of course. But like that that one in particular is is I you know you gotta whew, just just I I have a hard time not thinking two weeks, one month, three months, a year in advance. Yeah, I'm having a really hard time just focusing on today and tomorrow. For the yeah, day. you know. So like right now, that's all that I'm focusing on. Yeah. You know? Cause you, cause you have to, there's nothing you can't, you right. can't, who knows what the fuck is going to happen I think in three a, weeks from now. I think that's a fucking owl. Yeah. Is that what it's, I think that's an owl. I know. I, I think so too. Yeah. I don't want to see it. You see an owl. It's a, isn't that a bad omen when you see an owl looks at you? You ever hear about my story in Dorchester? That's when, right. Yep. When I yep. lived in the third floor apartment, yep. I came out and there was like a big white owl. Just staring at you. Cl- and closer than we are right now. Yeah. Fucking. And I was like, what the fuck? And he didn't move. He was just like. Yeah, he gave me like head down, put his eye yeah. looking at me like, "What are you gonna do, motherfucker?" Yeah. I was like, "Fuck." Yeah, I was like, "Fuck you, dude. You're in my house." But yeah. I'm like, "Oh, whatever." Yeah. And then eventually he just fucking took off. But it was just, like, and it was even when he took off, kind of looked back like, oh. <laughs> "I was like, all right." I think that is one. I and, think that is an owl. In case anyone's wondering, I definitely cannot recommend Steel Reserve Alloy Series spiked water. Hey, wait a second. Where's your Where's your ball trimmer? Uh, don't you have a do an ad for ball trimmers? I do, I do. And so w- while you're here, since you want to be so involved in that, I got to thank uh, a shout out to Manscaped.com for uh, uh, for uh, being one of the sponsors of the show. And if you're not familiar with Manscaped.com, then go check them out. Uh, they make all kinds of products ball that, are, that, that basically that are geared to towards uh, 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 grooming your nether regions on, right. uh, on the male physique uh, and doing it in a way that is safe and effective and bloodless. Um, you know, take a beard trimmer down there and see what the fuck happens. If you take all the, the f- all the sponsors <laughs> you could have gotten, I can't believe that that is the one. nothing against them. I think they're no, probably a no, great product, no. but just, I just, you, I don't know. Yeah, I just it's you. Yeah. But you know what? Manscaped.com. Uh, check them out. Check out the lawnmower 3.0, uh, fucking, uh, razor. It has, uh, these ceramic blades that, uh, protect you down there. So, you know, you know, things can get a little pruny down there and a little can wrinkly. You get, can I, can I try when he's out? Which is for, oh, actually I want to get one for a friend. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you you can get if you you can't borrow mine. That's All a right, little bizarre, right, and yeah. I know you wouldn't anyway no, because you're, no, no, no. <laughs> you're, you're, you're a germaphobe ass no, would not want to. No. Uh, that ain't but, happening. But yeah, hey, and and honestly, like I would not ever fucking represent anything that I didn't agree with or like. And they sent me all that shit ahead of time. Yeah. And I tried it out, and it fucking works. And right. and and uh, it works great. And uh, you know there was. Uh, no blood on my fingertips. And, nice. uh, <laughs> but yeah, check them out. Manscaped.com, uh, Lawnmower 3.0. They also make all kinds of other products that are, are geared towards your uh, genital health. <laughs> it is, they called it the Lawnmower 3.0? Yeah. I didn't try the 2.0 or the 1.0. Hold on a second. It's the Hold third on. iteration. Dude, they are back Hold in this shit. It's, it's a <laughs> fucking, like, it's a ball trimmer they call the Lawnmower. <laughs> yeah. And Dude. It's backed by science and they keep making advancements. That's why we're on 3.0. It's just, I, I would have called it like, you know, another region like trimmer, not like a fucking lawnmower. Yeah. It's the last thing I want to put next to my balls, man. Yeah, no, it's true, but. But it works good? It works good, man. And okay. uh, the thing is that uh, 
they have these like they, they also have like ball toner and like anti-chafing creams and all this other shit. You can go check them out. Um, but if you use the code Big Truth at checkout, you get free shipping and uh, and twenty uh, percent off your order. Um, the twenty percent off your order is more important than the free shipping. And they got package deals going on and these discounted package deals, and you get twenty percent even off fucking that. Also, uh, Amerta, uh, which is uh, AmertaMia dot com, it's our friends' uh, clothing company and uh, lifestyle company, and you can check them out. All kinds of good shit there: uh, t shirts, hats, fucking jackets, socks. Uh, they even get their own pomade. You want to slick wow. your hair up top after wow. you shave yourself down below and you're going to be fucking shop dressed and ready wow. to fucking go. Um, uh, but Amerta, you know, you, you've seen the shirts like, uh, you know, uh, you know, stop glorifying rats, uh, you know, all the just general code of conduct shit. Um, good dudes, good products. AmertaMia.com, Instagram and Facebook at AmertaMia. Again, at checkout, use code Big Truth. You get 20% off over there, too. So I'm saving you money left and right with my fucking uh, friends and fucking great. Cr- craziness. Uh and uh, while you're at it, check out Pitchfork, um, which is a uh, Pitchfork Hardware, which is a uh, Warren was the last uh, guest on this on, on this podcast, episode 30. Uh, he has a clothing company. Um, been around forever, dude. How long? How many? Dude, how much shit have you filmed where you've yeah. seen someone wearing a Pitchfork fucking shirt? It's like yeah. kind of a mainstay in the metal and punk and hardcore world. Been out for years. Uh, he's been out for years. And um, he uh, he also has a record label where they do uh, this Back to School series, which is a series of uh, limited edition, different color, seven inches, which uh, has an East Coast band on one side of the record and a, a West Coast band on the other side of the record. And, uh, you know, so definitely make sure to check them out. Pitchforkny.com. Um, check out chopcult.com. They are the biggest uh, news resource and uh, uh, message board for uh, motorcycle builders, chopper builders, and uh, motorcycle riders and all that. Uh, they got all kinds of shit going on there. They have um, they have uh, message boards geared towards uh, different uh, topics, whether you want to look up something for British motorcycles or American motorcycles or classifieds you're looking for, for rare parts or fucking something you need for your bike. Check them out chopcult.com uh they also have a mailing list and you know events pages uh, dude so it's a it's an information clearhouse for the motorcycle world so get all your motorbiking shit there um they got they got a store and everything too uh all the social medias just at chopcult or www.chopcult.com um also if you got any time or money left over, check out Chop Ahead, my shop here. We're sitting in it. Uh, whether you need an oil change or a full custom motorcycle built, everything in between, we handle it all. We got a parts counter, we got a showroom. Uh, it's a brick and mortar shop. It's a, it's a real place. It's not an online entity. Uh, we can get you any part you need. We can install any part you have. Um, uh, so check us out, chopahead.com. Uh, if you can't, if you're not local, if you are local. And I get a lot of you motherfuckers like from a town over ordering shit and I got to put it in a package and send it to you. Just come over here and save yourself. It would be 30 cents in gas and you're spending $4 on fucking postage. Just come over. Like if I see someone in my fucking town ordering shit, I'm going to bring it to your house and fucking throw it at you. Um, uh, but yeah, no, I'm just kidding. But yeah, just come by the shop. We're, 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 no one's going to bite you or shoot you. You know, it's going to be a good time. Uh, Chopahead.com, 13 County Road, East Freetown, Massachusetts. Um, and if uh, you want any more information on the podcast, you can check it out at BigTruthPodcast.com. Uh, we got all kinds of information there. Uh, Ian, anything else before we wrap up? No, oh, dude, I'm good. Thanks for having me, man. It's always good to hang, man. Yeah, fuck yeah, man. It, it, any excuse to hang out is always a good excuse, man. And we're so busy that we always have to kind of put some kind of business I to want it. that bike, though, right there. Which one? The black one. The, <laughs> the black one. That one right there. <laughs> with the, with, the, with the, the, That one, the, the gray one. The silver one. The, with the gray grips? Yeah. That's going to be for sale pretty soon. Really? That's one of ours. Yeah, I'm just waiting on a couple more parts to come in. Get rid have of the, to, the all right, let's, flames and shit. We're, we're going to shut this off and have yeah. you go sit on it. Wow, man. All right. Nice. Fuck yeah, man. <laughs>